Welcome back to the Try Back to Yourself podcast. I'm your host, E-Rock. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you never miss another podcast. Also, do me a favor. Go on to whatever podcast app you listen to us on and give us a rating and review. That really helps us rank in the searches. Thank you so much. Let's get into the podcast. Sorry, Discord was hiding my my thing. <laughs> yeah, you're cool, man. It's cool. Uh, when I first started doing these, I, I had to have uh, one of the young guys, like the teenagers that set this Discord up for me. Yep. I had to have him walk me through how to join a call, how to do a call. Oh, I, see. I didn't know shit. Um, <laughs> I used uh, Discord years ago for gaming, but yep. just like, you know, very basic. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's been a <laughs> it's been a learning process. And then uh, yeah, when I talked good. to uh, Def Row recently, mm. uh, you know Stuart. Yep. Do yep. He uh, he was like, "Have you tried using Zoom?" And I said, mm. "Man, I don't know. Is it kind of like Skype?" And it's uh, like Skype, <laughs> right? Mm. And so uh, I had used this and um, Skype one mm. time. With a girl yep. from Poland. So, uh, anyway, yeah. So, I had to be helped how to use this. And then there's been a handful of people that uh, never even use Discord. I see. Yeah. Um, so, I've had to kind of like walk them through. But it's pretty, you know, any anything where we can do a video call is... It works. Yeah. yeah I don't care what we use. Like, whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, Hell yeah. Welcome, dude. Thank you for having me. You got a great setup, man. I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. you got the mic right there. Uh, my room's uh, the a headset. Mess. No, your room looks great. You got the cool thing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yours is very yeah. clean, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so y- you mm-hmm. are, your well, your Instagram, or your Instagram and YouTube is mm-hmm. Mayday Son? Yes. Okay. And that is right. your Discord is uh, Mason. Yeah, that's my real name. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm Erock on the channel hmm. and mm-hmm. uh Eric. Um Oh, I, so, see, I see. Okay. Yeah, I got that nickname from a guy, actually the guy that gave me this um mm-hmm. constitution right here. Yep. Uh he was a business partner of mine years and years ago, like yeah. 18 years ago. Mm-hmm. And he said when we first met after about a month, he said, "Man, you remind me of this comic book character I I read about or I was reading uh, Sergeant Rock. And, mm. uh, you know, and I was like, okay. So yeah. <laughs> I was fairly new out of the military at the time. Yeah. And uh, so he would, yeah. So, and then he goes, so I'm going to call you E Rock instead of mm. Eric. I said, okay. Mm. There you go. <laughs> Except it. Fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, yeah. So, how did you come up with uh, Mayday Son? Uh, it's actually, um, it's like a shortened form of my middle of my first name and my last name together. And oh. then I just put San, which is like a Japanese uh, ending you add to any kind of person's name. So it's just like Mr. Mayday, I guess you would say. Gotcha. So yeah, that's how I came up with that one. It kind of rolled off the tongue. So I was like, all right. So yeah. Yeah. That's how I chose that one. <laughs> when uh, I spent a year in um, Okinawa, Japan. Yeah. Mm. And so I was I was familiar with the, the San, like when, yeah. the, when they would speak. And mm-hmm. also high at the end mm-hmm. of a lot of things. Arigato mm-hmm. height, you know, or, or mm-hmm. uh, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't, I took a couple of days of Japanese mm. and I wanted to learn the language while I was there. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is cool as hell. I'm yep. going to go home speaking Japanese. And mm. I went for two days and then just got sucked into the uh, going out drinking abyss. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Japan, especially Okinawa. Oh, dude. I had so much fun there, though. That's good. I went drinking. Well, I apologize. Marines. <laughs> yeah, Marines. Yeah, dude. Oh, we were fucking <laughs> dumb and, you know, just whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I apologize for the uh, time thing, man. I, uh, no, it's all right. Yeah. All when we set this up, it was before mm. the um, daylight savings, daylight time, savings right? time. Yeah. yeah. So now it's 14 dude. hours. No <laughs> shit. Yeah. So uh, I got, I woke up at like 640. I saw your message. I was like, what the, oh shit. 
Oh, and I'm rubbing my eyes like, oh my god, I gotta wake up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Oh yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you being on, man. It's cool. Um, no problem. I found Thanks you. I actually, me. I didn't find you. Uh, hmm. Stuart Defro yes. Airsoft, who had hmm. recently started his own podcast, hmm. um, told me about you hmm. and recommended hmm. that I reach out to you and talk to you. And awesome. I had never seen your channel. Yeah. Hmm. And so I found your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, dude, you're killing it. You've got, <laughs> I, I love your videos and your shorts. Thank you. Um, yeah, dude, great, great setup. So anyway, <laughs> Thank you. yeah. So how did you, uh, how did you get into starting a YouTube channel? Like what was, you're like, oh, I'll just start one or where there's a bunch of influences for, for air, for airsoft. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for quite a long time. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So my first, like real youtube channel i guess would be like when i used to do music so i would do like green day covers and stuff like that what so yes yeah, like music production i did all that and then i did that for a couple years and then i moved on to like live streaming and i was doing live streaming video games with my friend and then what that game was uh what were you playing it's like mostly like overwatch and like fps games and stuff stuff oh, we could gotcha. play together yeah and then um that didn't really work out for me because it was just too much time. And then I was like, all right. So then I just decided to start another channel um, when I was here in Japan. I was like, all right, I'm going to start a channel called Mayday-san. And that was mostly about like Japanese workplace jokes and just living in Japan, skits and sketches and stuff like that. So that was like my big thing for a while. Yeah. So I was doing that. I was doing that. I still do it today. And then um, at one point I was like, I wanted to do a gaming channel. I've always wanted to have a gaming channel. Mm. So then I started a gaming channel as a sub thing because I already had an audience. Like, I'm going to do a gaming channel too. Just make it for me, whatever. Just do commentaries, Call of Duty, all that stuff. And then at some point, I started playing Airsoft, which was only two years ago when I made that channel. And then um, my friend suggested that I just start – maybe I should film it. But I was like, I didn't want to like film Airsoft because it was kind of my escape from making content. Oh, and I was like, gotcha. I don't want to do that. And then, but he said, like, you just do it, just do it for you. I was like, okay. So I got a cheap camera and then I just started recording it and I started just posting it on that gaming channel. Like every week I'd post one, but the rest was just gaming. And then, yeah, it just became a habit. I was able to just keep doing it and just post it super easy, blah, blah, blah. And then my channel became a weird hybrid between gaming and airsoft at the same time. Yeah. And then at some point, I think maybe six months ago, I decided to just make it only about airsoft because that's where my audience was heading and where the channel was going. And then YouTube algorithms and stuff, it was mixing up my audience. So it was actually like cannibalizing itself. So I was like, all right, uh, I'm going to go full into yep. airsoft. And I went into airsoft. And I've been doing that for like the past six months now, just like hard focusing on it. And it's, yeah, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. What a, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And mm. you've got, uh, a ton of subs, mm. uh, your channel's grown a lot. Mm. And, um, so definitely, uh, you know, apparently switching or whatever, uh, mm. has helped, but you know, what's weird is I've mm. seen some of these channels that, you know, on YouTube that are, uh, like I follow a couple of them for, uh, like, um, fixing your car kind of stuff, yep. you know, car yep. repair. Yeah. But, and then, uh, I follow, there's a couple of them that I, that are, you know, memorable, I guess that I, one that I, but when I first started getting into YouTube yeah, and figuring out like, okay, you got to have one specific category, you know, for this channel mm. kind of thing. Yep. Well then I'm, I'm following these guys for like fixing my car. And then, mm. uh, this other one for, uh, setting up, uh, uh, radios, you know, for yeah. like on the field. Yeah. And, uh, and both some of these channels were like, now they had been around on YouTube for like ten years, but they yeah. had like three hundred thousand subs. Yeah, and their channel was all over the place. It was like family stuff, car yep. stuff. Yeah, uh, and then and I was like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. And then this radio guy had car stuff, radio. Like he was a comms guy yeah. back in you know in the seventies in the military. Yeah, and um, so uh, I was like, what? Well, that works, but oh, it takes ten years. Okay, so mm. uh, yeah. I'm do this faster, you know. But yeah, yeah, having that one specific kind of mm. category, I think uh, a lot of people, uh, most airsofters I've talked with are gamers, mm. you know, yes. in some way. They're yes. either heavy into video games or 
like Warhammer 40k, yep. um, cosplay, like that that mm-hmm. kind of gaming. Yep. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I talked to somebody recently that um, mm. was starting out in reenactment and yep. was doing this thing where uh, I can't remember what he called it, but it was um, where they do the knights in armor kind of thing. Oh, oh that's cool. Mm. And they had to have legit, like they have sword fights with real swords, metal, but not, wow. you know, the, the edges are not sharp. Oh, they're dulled. Yeah. They're yeah. dulled, but mm. they're, they're going full strength. So that your armor, wow. if you have chain mail, it has to be like uh rated, whatever kind of rating Very they good. have where it wow. will take all these hits and stuff. He said wow. that was way more expensive than airsoft and i was like holy shit yeah i can imagine uh, that <laughs> that's crazy Jeez, dude that's crazy yeah. so what did uh when you started youtube years ago what mm-hmm. um you just uh you were young and like hey i'm gonna start posting shit yeah i've always liked making i've always liked making things <laughs> like okay. i've always i've always been uh i guess the creative type so whether it's drawing or making crafts or making videos or making songs or whatever i've always just liked doing it and that's yeah honestly something i could just do for the rest of my life if i'm retired so what i've always wanted to do is just like make that a living it's like i've always right. wanted to have you know an audience that would like my art basically and then i could kind of make a living off of that and that's basically what's kind of driven me and i enjoy it at the same time right so yeah. You know, it, as an artist, it's kind of like you really have to make that compromise if you're trying to take it seriously between like what you want to make and what the audience wants and stuff like that. Because, you know, at the end of the day, my goals are different than someone who's just trying to draw a nice picture, right? So, right, um, it is quite the battle. But at the at its core, I enjoy it no matter what, right? right. So, yeah, that's kind of why I want. I want why I wanted to do it is because I've always wanted to, you know, have an audience and people look at my art. So, even oh, if it's okay. hair talk, yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, I was thrown into this uh, way different. I didn't, I didn't even like YouTube or my kids watching videos or nothing. So uh, yeah. it's very strange that I'm recording this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I got sucked in, bro. Like uh, mm. I had four other YouTube channels before this. Yep. And um, a cooking channel, mm. uh, a review channel, mm. uh, a real steel gun channel. Nice. Um. And which we loved doing until like three and a half years ago, whatever, when, um, when ammo mm. prices went through yeah. the roof yep. and we were like, Oh, it just we'll can't just do stick it with airsoft BBs yeah. are cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. Definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, when I did the airsoft thing, I started meeting all these new people and, uh, really got a tra- you know, it was just sucked into the community. Like, mm. every- these other channels, you know, you'd put, I'd post videos and yeah, uh, pretty consistently and yeah. there'd be one or two comments, you know, blah, 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 mm. whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ask a question about uh, an item we reviewed or something, yeah. but mm. there was no real interaction and mm. the airsoft thing we started and it was like, like the first month just, oh man, this is good. You know, 20 comments on a video. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, what? that's good. Uh, yeah. And then. Uh, and then more and more and more, you know, we start mm. meeting people and yep. getting to know people in there. So mm. that's what kind of drew me in. And then, uh, and, and now I really found this niche of, I love meeting. Well, I like meeting people in real life anyway. Yeah. Um, so I like doing this. Uh, it's been mm. great, but that's yeah, I, I didn't like YouTube at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> five years ago, somebody said, uh, YouTube, I'm like, put your freaking phone or tablet down and go go yeah. outside and do something yeah go play soccer <laughs> <laughs> right yeah oh yeah dude now did you yeah. grow up in uh japan no i'm uh, i'm actually canadian so um no i shit. only moved yeah I only nobody would have guessed that dude yeah i know For real? i only yeah i only moved here like six and a half years ago so i've been wow. here a while um yeah. but last time i was in canada yeah i was like yeah it was like six years ago Jeez, yeah yeah, so I'm Canadian, so like everything just straight to the bone, Canadian, yeah. get all that stuff. We probably have very similar cultures at this point, you know, right, Americans right. and Canadians, right? Sure. And then, yeah, I just, I don't really tell anyone that on my channel. I just, 
I don't know, there's no need. <laughs> it's just well, like, yeah. okay, I'm just Yeah, it never comes up. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people think I'm Japanese. Right. They're like, oh, he's just a Japanese guy. He's really good English. I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> I, never, I never address it. I'm like, no, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what uh, – so your parents, uh, mm. where where are they from originally? Oh, my Did they my ethnicity to- – uh, yeah, they're Filipino. Yeah. So, yeah, they're Filipino. They moved when they were like kids, and then I was born there. A lot of my sister, so like I'm just full up Canadian, and then yeah, my dad's yeah. side is my dad's side is very like whitewashed, and my mom's side is very Filipino, so I get both. Yeah, yeah. And right. then my stepdad is like Scottish, so it's like, yeah. And then our family <laughs> friends are Jamaican, so it's like, okay, so we have so much of this mix of everything. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. It sounds like my family. We have, uh, mm. well, my my kids. So mm. the my daughter, she went yeah. in the Air Force. She met her husband there, and uh, mm. she. Um, her husband is her dad or his dad is black Mm. and his mom is uh filipino oh so oh yeah so uh she'll she still speaks tagalog and stuff so when she gets pissed you know she'll yell at (laughs) yeah and uh uh yeah so then uh then my other son one of my Mm. other sons is uh his wife is uh her mom is white and her dad is black um and then my other son, mm-hmm. his wife is Colombian, wow. and uh, so dude, we get together. You got the whole mix, and we've got <laughs> we got rap music going. We've got uh, you know my uh, I don't even know what you you know my oh. son or my son in law's mom, mm. you know, yelling in Tagalog, yeah, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then my other son's wife uh, speaking mm. Spanish, and yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's funny. wow. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, dude. I love yeah. I love the mix. Uh, mm. You know, That's it's good. it makes life interesting for sure. And mm. I I love learning people's backgrounds and different yeah. cultures and stuff. When I mm. when I went to Okinawa, it was um, 1990, and yeah. you know, no internet, and, and you know, yeah, you didn't really have a way to know too much about where you're going except yep. from stories. Mm. So, learning the culture there was uh, what was so kind of like just i think way different learning it that way than if mm. you knew a lot about it going into mm. it yeah. you know what i mean so no everything was like yeah right so it was mm. like wow oh wow oh my yeah. god this is cool mm. and this is mm. cool mm. <laughs> uh, so because it's so different it's not like going to a different mm. state um mm. you know the the religion's different the co- like everything everything was, uh, extremely different so yeah yeah, yeah dude well, that's cool, man. What uh, what took you to Japan? Uh, for me, I had like, I just graduated uh, university and then was like, just working retail. That's I wasn't really doing anything. And then my girlfriend at the time was Japanese national, and then she had to go back to Japan because her visa is expiring. And I was like, mm. all right, I guess I'll come to you know do that thing, just check it out for a year. You know, I learned Japanese at university for two years as a elective. It was just like an extra course. I was like, ah, oh, just. Well, so just use it, right? So, and then I went, and then, you know, and then I ended up just staying, and I didn't really leave. <laughs> so, yeah, it was only supposed to be like a temporary like thing for a year, check it out, then come back, but armed with knowledge. But then I ended up just staying here, and I've been here ever since. So, okay, now now at this point, my career, it's like my career, I guess, online is based in Japan. So there really isn't any reason to like go back to Canada right. or anything like that. Yeah. So, well, yeah. especially now, man, they're about to ban airsoft. It looks like. Yeah, so, so now it's like okay, not uh, going anymore. Yeah, just hang yeah. on, hang on for a while, and if you yeah. do consider going back, wait until after Christmas or something until they figure out what they're doing. So what they're doing, yeah, yeah. I had a couple guys on from there. Yeah, uh, ELR um, is their channel, mm. and uh, it's uh, extreme long range airsoft. So mm. they. Um, they mostly focus on the sniping, you know, airsoft mm. sniping and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and they're in Canada and we, I had them on two of the guys from that team. I had them on specifically to talk about that bill that's coming up or whatever. Yeah. So they were, you know, and the one guy was actually, uh, kind of, I forget what he, you know, how his involvement was, but he was part mm. of the parliament kind of thing, like in mm. the, so we knew a lot of the behind the scenes and it was, uh, yeah very interesting to hear uh what was going on and um but yeah so hopefully they don't they they just remove airsoft from the bill 
and and it, yeah. you know, they're allowed to play or, still. So, or at least make them wear like orange tips or something. Like, <laughs> if that's the concern, yeah. right? Well, that yeah. was yeah. That's what we talked about too on that on that cast mm-hmm. was, uh, what would be the best outcome if you had to choose? You know, like if they're going to keep some part of it in there, what uh, what's the best? You know, well, mm-hmm. just make some modifications to the game that doesn't really you know stop mm-hmm. us from playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for that's sure. Funny. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. So Japan um, mm-hmm. ha- uh, has a big, pretty big airsoft community. Yep. Okay. Japan is the birthplace of airsoft. It's where it was invented. Uh, so okay. the community is actually, well, I guess by sheer numbers, America's community and Europe's community is a lot bigger, obviously. But yeah. Japan's community is uh, smaller, but it's more, uh, what's the word? Like, not dense, but like, the people who like airsoft really like airsoft. Like it's yeah, very, gotcha. it's a very concentrated, very passionate niche. Okay. And uh, yeah, yes, they take it very seriously here, but they also know at the same time that it's a game. So it's not like they think they're military people. They know that they're cosplaying, or they know that they're just playing a game. Right. But just like any other craft in Japan, right? Like whether it be a sword making, fishing, knitting. Like I think there's a saying that. The, the Japanese are like masters of what they do. Like there are people who are like li- really take airsoft seriously. So it's like yeah. in terms of skill level. So gotcha. I'd say the like, difficulty of the player base here is like very very high. Yeah. Obviously, you'll get some times where like you face like utter noobs or whatever. But sure. there for like the first year of my playing airsoft, I was facing a lot of really good people, and it was just like very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> so how did your first yeah. game go when you went out there? My very first game of airsoft I ever kicked? played. Yeah, I wanted to quit. <laughs> I wanted to quit. I almost quit. I almost quit. Oh, I actually shit. almost quit. Yeah. Um, I kind of set myself up for failure, though. But So the first time I ever did is I, I went alone because I didn't really have anyone to go with. So gotcha. that's mistake number one. You always want to uh-huh. go with your friends. Number two, I, I did buy a gun. I didn't rent a gun. I got my own, which was, the, was like an MP5K. And uh, I didn't have any red dots or anything. I didn't know anything about that. It was just like iron sights. I didn't know about the hop up or anything or <laughs> zeroing your optic or any or zeroing your irons or anything like that. So yeah. I wasn't actually like hitting anybody. <laughs> and I wasn't getting that many kills. And I just like didn't know the map. At the time, at that one location, the staff weren't that welcoming. I mean, they did, but they weren't like, we're going to help you out. It's just like, yo, here it is. Yep. Have fun. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I remember, like, uh, yeah, so Japan is, like, one-life game modes, right? So I remember most of the time I was just sitting in safety. I wasn't actually really playing. <laughs> I was just dead half the time. So I was like, why am I paying for this? <laughs> like, I didn't, yeah, so I was just, like, I was really confused. I was like, okay. And I remember typing on Instagram at the time. I was like, hmm, Airsoft's not for me. Like, I'd rather just play video games. I don't know why I'd want to play this. So then <laughs> at the same day I called... Because I went in the That's morning, awesome. so then the same day I called the dude and I was like, "Yo, I, I, it's gonna return this gun. Like, I don't want it. I think I'm gonna quit airsoft." He's like, "I, right, let's bring it tomorrow." I'm like, "Okay." So I thought about it over a day, and I ended up keeping it, and it just like sat in my room for like three months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my first experience of airsoft. It was and very you didn't brutal. play for those three months. You were just like, I didn't eh, play. "Whatever." No, I didn't play. And then I think uh, I was like jobless. For a period of time, I was like in between jobs because I was transitioning to another job, and then I had like free time. I was like, right, I'm gonna try it again, whatever. Yeah. And then I went to another field, and the staff they were really nice, and the people they were really nice, and everyone was like talking to me and welcoming me, telling me how to play and stuff. And it was like a weekday night, so like none of the casuals were there. It was all just the regulars, so everybody kind of knew what was going on, and everybody was yeah. like really chummy. And then there, we played like back-to-back games. So even if you died, you were able to play really quickly again. And that day, I had so much fun just laughing and talking to all the new player, all the other players, and just having a lot of fun. And I had a red dot, so <laughs> I was actually able to hit it. Just the cheap Amazon dot, and I was actually yeah. able to hit people. And I was like, "Yo, this is dope." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then that kind of reignited it for me, and it kind of saved me a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And well, I got listen, really... man, you're better than me. Mm. The uh, the first time I ever used a red dot, I didn't know what the fuck. I was like, we didn't have those in the military when I was in. That was weird, yeah, yeah iron. Mm. Yeah, we had iron. So uh, when my sons started getting an airsoft, and they got red dots for one of their guns. Mm. I'm like, 
first off, why do you need a, a sight for an airsoft gun? Like you just mm. watch the BB where it goes anyway. Like mm. you're not aiming. Uh, mm. And they're like, yeah, you do. You aim. You, once you get your hop upset, you can aim. And I'm like, yeah. whatever. So they put a red dot on there. I'm like, where the where the where is this? The, you how find do I it? Get, yeah. I couldn't find it. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I ever looked through one of these, I was so like, it was like, it felt like magical. It was such a magical like feeling. I was like, yo, it's so cool. I've never looked at a red dot in my life. Yeah. It's just like the video games. I was like, when I looked through <laughs> for the first time, I was like, whoa, it's so surreal. Mm. It's so cool. And then I remember like, I didn't even know how to zero it. Um, so I kind of looked up a lot of videos, how to zero it. So I zeroed it in my house at like five meters. Yeah. And then, uh, and my dumbass, I didn't know that <laughs> even if you zero to five, it's going to be zero for five. It doesn't matter. Like at the range, it'll change, right? So right. then I went to the range, which is 25 meters, and I'm shooting it. I'm like, why is it not hitting it? Why is it not hitting the target? I, I centered this thing. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> so then I realized, oh, you have to zero it for 25 or whatever range you want. Right. And it changes. It's like actual math. So that was, I, I kind of miss being that naive about things. And yeah. being so pure about it because now it's all just about i'm beyond like those kind of basic things now so just like sure i kind of miss the what's it what you might call it i guess it would be the magic of air yeah the magic dude it's like yeah. the self-discovery kind of thing it's uh yeah. and honestly there's a little bit of that that i do on here with these podcasts yeah a lot of people you know most people ask me when i ask mm. them to be on <clears throat> this is mm. their first podcast and they'll, they'll ask a lot of questions and i'm just real like hey you know, just uh, if you have a headset and mic, it works best, but yep. you don't have to, you know, um, earbuds or whatever. You know, if you want to – and I've had people use the, the audio or the mic from the laptop, which yep. is horrible, but it, it worked enough, yep. you know. And so um, I let them – I kind of let them do that and their, the lighting, uh, you know, if they're not experienced with it. So mm. they'll, sometimes they'll have a light behind them. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, so yeah. all these uh, little things. And then, um, so I won't really say anything too much. And then when yeah. I post the video, they'll comment and be like, Oh man, the audio. Mm. Okay. And, uh, or the, the, you know, the video was dark and this kind yeah. of thing. So I've had a lot of people on a second time. And yeah. they'll, uh, when we, the first, you know, when we're first setting up just first 30 seconds or something, they're like, yeah, I got this mic and I got <clears throat> a lamp right here and they yeah. look way better and they sound way yeah. better. And I feel like that kind of information, like learning that way yeah. uh, from them watching their themselves on there yeah. is, uh, is y you learn better and it's mm. more probably exciting Maybe a little more disappointing because you're like, yeah. oh man, I wish I would have, yeah. you know. But um, they they learn better, and it's mm. like that path of self discovery. So I just kind of let people uh, just do that, or whatever. And, mm. and 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 by the way, these are you know I tell everybody these are recorded. So if something happens, um, you know, we have to take a piss or whatever, uh, which yeah. happens very calm. You know, it's very calm. Mm. Uh, we just pause it or whatever. Mm. And mm. no big deal. You know, I cut it out. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. So, anyway, so yeah, you're, mm. uh, you were about to quit Airsoft right after you first started. And then, uh, yeah. And then you went to a field that had, um, you know, well, I kind of, I guess the people made a difference. The people, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, it's more like the friends, right? And just having people yeah. to enjoy it with, I think, mm -hmm. with any hobby. Um, so, after that, uh, good night i was like really into it so like, right, i'm gonna go play some more by myself see if i can do it again yeah. so then i got ready i got my mp5k and then i went to the field and turns out nobody showed up so it was only me and i was oh like God. shit so we couldn't actually play so i was sad i was like ah, i can't play i can't play like i came That's all this so way weird. for nothing right i couldn't have bothered to call ahead <laughs> didn't <just> call ahead <laughs> didn't even think to call ahead i already traveled 40 minutes i was like oh shit oh shit so then uh i posted on twitter i'm like oh, i'm sad no one showed up to airsoft so then this guy uh dms me and he's like yo i'll play airsoft with you like oh i'm not a creep i promise here's a picture of me actually playing at uh you know the site and i was like oh shit okay cool so yeah. then I went to go, I went again that next weekend with him and another guy. And then, yeah, again, it was, it was just super fun. Like he showed me like his guns and 
his gas blowback pistol and all that stuff. And I was like, wow, it was really cool. And then it was really fun to be able to just play with somebody else. Right. And then a few, few games later, our friend group started growing. We just, you know, his friends knew his friends and then their friends knew their friends. We had a good solid group of like six guys. And we were just going out every other week or something like that. And had a lot of fun. And I think friends is really what makes it even to this day. Like I, I'm still reluctant to go play solo. Like I like, cause if you have a bad time, you know, you still have fun with your friends, right? But if you have a bad time by yourself, Absolutely. it's like fuck. <laughs> it's like, yes. damn it, I just feel like an asshole. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. So, um, especially now for me, where it's like I, I mainly go to play. Well, obviously, I like to play it, but a lot of the reason I go to play is because I need to get footage or I need to cover a certain mm-hmm. like gun that I have or I have to review a product that I'm doing or something like that. So, yeah. like, I'm going there for a reason. So, I need to make yep. sure that like I'm not dying and I'm having fun and. I have a lot of opportunities to do so. And if I can't get that opportunity, it's really frustrating by yourself. It's like, damn, well, why did I come here? But at least you with your friends, like, well, I had fun with Yuki or I had fun with my boy, like James or something. It's like, it doesn't even matter yeah. to me. Right. And then ever since I started playing with like Stu, uh, the Fro Airsoft, like that's really kind of just changed it because there was a little interim again for at the beginning of year two for me where I was playing by myself or I was playing with my Japanese friends, but we don't really play that often. But then when I start playing with Stu and our other friend, Dan, it's just like now we're like this really good tight team. It's the first time I played as a team. And it's really gotcha. just, you know, reawakened the game for me. And I think and you play with different people, you get to play in different ways. So when I play with my Japanese friends, like I'm a little bit more passive, right? Because they're passive. Uh, right. There's one of them that are is pretty tactical. So like we've kind of moved together. Um, yeah. when I play by myself, like I can just make my own experience when I play with other people, I have to rush a lot, like with Dan and Stu. So <laughs> I feel like friends really does make it once you get, once you've played, you know, the field, the same amount of fields over and over, you play with all the different kinds of guns. It's just like friends will really keep you going forward. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, it's definitely a, <clears throat> it's a community sport. Um, yes. it's probably the biggest part of it. Uh, you know, that's what I've heard across the board from yep. anyone, every, you know, anywhere, I guess, yeah. is that same uh, kind of theme or whatever. Now, do you yep. still have your first, uh, that first gun you had? I sold it. I sold How it. How dare you? I, no, How I know, I know, you? I know. Like everyone is, <laughs> I, I remember when I sold it, I was like, oh, so people are getting mad at me for selling this gun. But I was like, I don't even use it. I really don't even use it. I can't no. even HK slap it. Because you put the battery <laughs> inside the charging handle. It's like, why do I want this? I don't even need this. Oh, I don't shit. even need this. So like, yeah, I didn't need it. Because I was at a, I had a phase where I was clearing out all my inventory of, of airsoft guns. Because I, like, I didn't want to have repeat guns. I had like three MP5s. I was like, I don't need three MP5s. I'm never going to use them. So then I was like clearing out everything. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get rid of this MP5K. Get like 200, 200 bucks off of it. And I did, you know, and I, I still don't regret it to this day because, like, I have an MP5 now. Like, I have a, right. the NGRS one, so I was like, I don't need that. Oh, I have nice. one that's really good. So I was just like, yeah, I even sold my first pistol. <laughs> like, yeah. I felt no ways. I felt no ways about it. <laughs> I felt yeah, like, I don't. I'm the same way. I don't. I don't really. I'm not too sentimental with uh, with certain things, you know, like that. Mm. And yeah, I think most people are, uh, or most people yeah. sell their first guns because. You know, or get rid of them, or give them away, yeah. or whatever. You know, because they're uh, then once they get the more expensive stuff or the better, you know, stuff, yeah. they're uh, they're like, I'm not gonna, I don't have room for this. Like, yeah, most people I've talked with, man, have a ton of guns. To, oh, uh, yeah, they're you know, all here for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, I'd rather not give my favorite or most used gun as opposed to my first gun because yeah. I actually use it. <laughs> like MP5K, I barely use it. Gotcha. So I, was, I never needed it. But, what do you uh, use now? Now, oh my god, I have too many. Like this year, I've been investing in a lot of things because the yen is the yen is sucks, right? So the Japanese yen is getting worse. So um, mm. all the prices are going up gotcha. by like hundred, a hundred dollars, two hundred, three hundred dollars. So I'm like, yeah. So I was just like in the summer, I was like, I better buy these things now. I'm gonna buy them anyway. I plan had plans to buy them like whatever years, months from now. But I was like, I just buy them anyway now. So that because I know they're gonna go up in price. So right now, yeah. what do I even use right now? Yeah, you got Here's something close. You can show it off. Most most of these podcasts are uh, show and tell, bro. <laughs> they show yeah, everything. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh my gosh, look at that. We couldn't even see all that stuff behind you with um, 
engine somewhere. There you go. Yeah. You know, I don't even use this one, but <clears throat> this is my uh, MP5A5. Uh, it's the recoil. Awesome. It's the recoil shock, so it actually has like recoil on it. So it's electric, electric re- blowback. Yeah, electric blowback, Tokimarui. and nice. uh, MP5 is my. It was been my favorite gun of all time, of all time. Okay. So like, I remember the first time I ever saw one. I think it was the uh, game years ago of Rainbow Six Vegas. Yes. And, yeah. God, I love that had, game. Yeah, they had the MP5N. Yep. And that game got me really into like guns, like super into them. Like I was oh, like. Okay. I was building cardboard P90s and cardboard P5s when I was a kid. That was one of the first games that had the r- realistic, like yeah. one shot, you're dead kind of shit. Yeah. They, Did you yeah, ever play Terrace? Uh, the remember the game mode Terrace Hunt on there? Terrace Hunt. Yep. Bro, holy <laughs> shit! I was like, this is so fucking hard. It's so hard because you're going from like Halo and like high time yes. games, and then you have to go to Rainbow Six. Like, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead immediately. <laughs> but I loved, like, I loved the tactical aspect of it. I just always loved this thing hmm. so that's why i saw the mp5k <laughs> gotcha. I, like, I, don't need it. I got one right here now it's an mp5k yeah. so awesome. uh yeah this is definitely my favorite one um you don't need to upgrade it because it has the mag fit and everything inside of it and has recoil and it has the only slappable charging handle in the world that you can slap this thing to kingdom come it won't break it's reinforced oh. nylon reinforced nylon uh alloy or whatever so it's not yeah. breaking no, so that's this has awesome. been my favorite one, but ironically, you can't use it in the winter because the nozzle gets too tight and then it doesn't feed. And you have to get a huh. blow dryer. You have to get a blow dryer on the hop unit and just like heat it up, and then it'll start shooting again. Oh, but, that's, uh, that's the only okay. thing that kind of sucks about it. I'll have to send it to Maduri to fix this month. But when it comes to PDW, I'd say that. Uh, what else? Oh, Man, that, that looks right. awesome, though. Oh, Wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there it is. I, I actually don't even own a standard M4. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. <laughs> this guy right here, I'm sure you know, it's very popular these days. It's the yep. MCX, Six MCX. Hour MCX. Right. This was my first, I guess, standard AEG that right. doesn't have recoil or anything because all my okay. AEGs have recoil or something, except for oh, this. Shit. This one is like. I remember when I saw it in Call of Duty, and I was like, yo, this gun is so cool. It's so cool. I wish they made one. And then I Googled it, and it's like, oh, my God, they have one. <laughs> so I was like, hell, yeah, I'm getting this thing. And oh, then, awesome. uh, yeah, but this gun was a nightmare of a thing because uh, you upgraded uh, the box, and it had a whole lot of problems. So I barely, it was barely in my possession. It was with my tech the whole time I've had this thing. Oh, my thing. gosh. So, like, melted gearbox, all that kind of stuff is horrible. Uh, but now shit. it's good. Now it's good. You yeah, have a whole new gearbox in here, and it's good to go. And you got this stock from the from my friend, which comes on the MPX because this comes with the telescopic stock. So then oh, I yeah. wanted to have like a proper one because I have big long arms, so I just it's easier to use this way now. And it yeah. just looks goddamn cool. So it does look cool as hell. Yeah, it's it's cool and it's really light. So yep, yeah, this is like one of my top favorite M4s. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, one of the guys I uh, did a podcast with, he's been playing since uh, mid-90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, Airsoft. He's mm. an older guy, and he's never had an M4 style. And he has hundreds mm. of guns. But he doesn't have he's an M4. built guns. No. he wow. Just all different kinds of, you know, crazy stuff. But Yeah, yeah. for me, I don't really like just using an M4 because I like yeah. to manipulate my Airsoft toys, my weapons. So a lot of the guns that I have have, like, real mechanics that you have to do so because i know this is like for me for airsoft right when i remember i was first playing like these mid caps would go up to like 80 rounds 90 rounds yeah. and we're playing one life game modes and you're only shooting like three four five maybe ten times if you're a little spammy so i remember when i first started i was like you know what I, i'm just gonna use real counts because mm-hmm. you would actually be able to use your kit because yeah. Um, that's why I like the NGRS systems because their magazines can have a 30 round switch inside. So all of my guns that I use, I run real count. So if it's a 20, yeah. if my scar, my scar over there is 20 rounds, my, nice. uh, my VSR is five. Holy and then shit. people are like, why you, why would you do that to yourself? Well, like I want to actually like use my kit and do everything. Right. So, right. and it makes you a better player because now you have to think, okay, here's that engagement. Okay. I better like tack reload before I go in there. 
instead right. of thinking of infinite now, but there's a lot of good like oh shit moments where it's like you're shooting your empty like oh shit, so you gotta like learn to speed reload and kind of go and do that stuff, right? So and there's a lot of like oh, I'm re-indexing a lot of the time, I'm just re-indexing my mags, making sure they're all good, you know, press checking all that kind of stuff. And for me, that's more fun, right? Because that's yeah. what we're doing. Like we're LARPing, right? So I want to be able to actually use my stuff, and it actually gives all of these it gives all of these airsoft guns a reason to buy them. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if they're all the same and they all perform the same, you're just buying skins. Right. So, so right. So point. like, yeah. So like for me. And by the way, your, purpose. your, uh, reloading, yeah. it has got to be the <laughs> fastest I've seen, uh, on, you know, videos or whatever, you know, I've seen the uh, fastest I've seen so far. I watched all <laughs> your reloading you. stuff, you know, your shorts. I was like, yeah. dude, <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> thank you my friend dan he always likes like i love watching you reload bro i'm like oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> well it's because you because i'm actually doing it right and i'm actually doing it under stressful situations well we have one life game modes right and i don't uh, want to pay 50 bucks to sit in safety so for me that's shit. stressful enough for me that's stress in my wallet so i'm not trying to die <laughs> right and again it's like i'm not trying to i'm trying to get footage so i'm not yeah. trying to die at the beginning that's a waste right so for me it's stressful enough for me i'm not gonna die but it's like yo i'm not trying to die i gotta make sure i get back in this fight or whatever blah, blah, right blah, right um what's another one i like this one is a new one that i kind of built Ooh, is my gas blowback akm yeah and it's modernized and uh with the help of devil six parts which is really great they actually sent me all the parts oh, so sure. i'd have to pay okay. a thing to like upgrade this thing it's like okay i'll take it bro um, what is it? Devil Six. Devil Six. So this is Aaron Smith parts made yeah. by Devil Six. So Devil Six okay. is like a distributor in Japan and Okinawa, and they make these replica parts. So it's a SAG, uh, SAG nice. Mark II. Okay. So I remember when I first got uh, my first AK, it was like a SEMA. No, what was it? G and G. And okay. I remember I didn't like how when I'm shooting a reciprocating bolt weapon that it wasn't uh -huh. reciprocating. Right. And on camera, it's like not moving. It's like what is this? <laughs> what is this, right? So I'm like, yo, I want I want something that's actually going to move. Yeah. So then uh, they came up with the AKM at that time. And I was like, yeah, I instantly bought that thing. I 100% just bought that. And what I didn't like about the AK was that it was like, I did like the reloads. Like the reloads are fun. You know, it's easy to easy to kind of do. And it's, it's cool. Yeah. But um, it just wasn't what the word like i like to call it gameplay viability like the gameplay viability of the ak considering japan's fields and everything it just wasn't viable it's like a 16 inch right 16 inch thing and there's no rail space i have big long arms so i'm holding it really weird i can't really pull it into my shoulder the stock is fixed the bakelite grip is horrible so like <laughs> i didn't use my ak for so long because it's like right. i didn't like the mechanics of it and i was like oh i want to keep the wood classic look but I got over that quickly. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I, want, I want it to be functional. Yeah. And then the great part about this is that it also shortens it down to uh, 13. Oh, okay. So it's actually much more usable now in any situation. And now I have, you know, you know, I got the buffer tube stock and I can easily shoulder it and do all right. that stuff. But yeah, this has just been super. I've always wanted to have like a super modern, cool AK-47. Which and is that's really cool. a gas blowback. It is a gas blowback. AKM. So that's loud indoors. Yeah, it it clanks. It's pretty loud. Oh, loud yeah. boy. And it's all in semi too. So gas blowbacks are really great for semi. Um, so that's where you usually find using them. But the reason I don't like AK I don't like using gas blowbacks because I the reloads are really slow. Because uh, you have to be careful with these things. You can't just oh, because like, them on filled, the ground. The mags are filled with gas. They're filled with gas, these little lips are fragile, they'll crack, you're done. Mm. And you can't actually find these mags. So like a lot of the speed that you get from the gas blowback is slowed down by the amount of times you have to actually be careful when you're reloading, which is why gotcha. I moved to NGRS, which is the recoil shocks. Because they also have recoil, they have both they have bolt stop functions, and they're just regular magazines. So I could just dash them, I throw them on the ground, whatever, it doesn't matter to me, <laughs> right? For those things. So Yeah. 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 The uh the AKs are kind of big and clunky for indoor. Um, yeah, because the mag, the mag, the way it sticks out, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's pretty long. And uh, yeah, you know, I would say, a, so. I'd say so. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then uh, the uh, yeah, that too. Um, you know, the say or the uh, selector switch the selector. is a little. You know, it's big, and you kind of have mm -hmm. to reach up with your finger and or your thumb, and you know. yeah. For this one, I don't really manipulate the safety. 
like I do with the AR. So AR every time I'm off off target, like I'll just flip the safe. And right. then when I'm on target, I'll flip down. But for this one, because the action is so fast, I'll just leave it and I'll nice. just have it on like this. But when I reload, then I'll just, you know, do whatever. Gotcha. And then bring it back on there, right? But uh yeah, AKs AKs are a fun one. But uh, ergonomically, I think ARs are better. But, you know, you got to have your fun guns, right? So. Right, for sure. Well, one of the guys I talked with, yeah. he, um, he and his buddy had, I think the, I don't know if one of them had an AK, but they both had mm. gas blowbacks. Um, mm. One of them had an MP7 or something like that. Well, yep. they were indoors. They were outside, and then they moved, you know, into a building. Yep. And they were in, like, a hallway. It was like a school, an old rundown school or something. So they're yep. shooting down a hallway, and bo- yep. they were uh, one on one side, one on the other. Yep. And they're shooting down the middle, and mm. the other guys on the other end, it was so loud because they both had gas Oh, gas, yep. Yeah, mm. dude. Like, the other team were just scattered. Like, they wouldn't even, you know, yeah, they wouldn't even scared. pop their head out or nothing, yeah. bro. They were like, it was too loud. It sounded yeah. like a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always fun. Which is interesting. Um, a lot of players in Japan, especially in CQB, will value their position and stealth over anything. Mm. So they won't communicate. It's all nonverbal. Uh, They'll try and get quiet guns. They'll try and avoid gas guns if they can. Gotcha. Be as stealthy as possible. Yeah. Because everyone is playing their life, right? So right. you don't want to give away your position. You don't want to let the enemy know you are, right? Because the mentality is completely different. I'm sure you've seen it or have heard it from a lot of your guests on the show where it's like people rushing around CQB. And the other day I was playing with uh, US Airsoft. Scott oh, oh yeah, that's right. They, yeah, uh, we were, him and um, uh, RGK were there. Yes, they were there. And then Hollenbeck was here in Tokyo. So we took him out yesterday. And then he learned pretty quickly how Airsoft is different here. You can't, like, yeah, I'm like, okay, go through that door. He goes through, popped right in the head. He peeks out a thing, <laughs> popped right in the forehead. Peeks out, popped right in the forehead. So a lot of players are just posted up. They're hiding. And you're, you can only shoot at knuckles. You only see knuckles. Mm. I remember I was like, way in my spawn. I was looking down this tiny little doorway, and I couldn't see. And all I saw was a green BB. One, only one BB comes right at my head. And I was like, got hit. So it's like not spammy either. It's a very, very uh, Rainbow Six Siege, very, very quiet. Right. A one shot, very, one very kill different. kind of thing. One shot, one kill. And everyone's playing their life. Everyone will tend to camp more. And if you want to be aggressive, it's a lot of. You have to know how to pie corners. You have to know how to clear. You have to know how to break down your rifle. You have to know how to switch to your pistol really quickly if you have to go around corners. So it's a lot of, I, I mean, when we had the pandemic and we closed down the country for the society for like two months, I, I think, yeah. and we couldn't play airsoft. I remember I just spent the, I spent oh, this entire two months just watching real steel techniques and reloading and mentalities, how to set up carbines, all that stuff. I watched that for two months and I just practiced that the entire time. That's because awesome. I knew, because I knew that, like, when I go back, I'm just gonna get destroyed. Because <laughs> I was getting destroyed up until then by like these yeah. crazy players, and I was like, I'm done. I want to be good. I want to be shit. <laughs> so then when I came back, I was just destroying people. And then I remember I was watching like uh, was Project Gecko with a uh, uh, US Pro or whatever. And they're touching like Solo Man CQB and like footwork and everything. It's just like this right. whole thing. And then I I really took it to heart and I really like applied it at this one kill house map I went to completely destroyed everybody because just the footwork and the amount you could conceal and everything and just having yeah. your gun up and just using a gas gun like you just i don't know <laughs> dude so, that's gotta feel good though when you when you yeah. study like that when you study something you study something you yep. study something and you're practicing mm. on your own but then you put it into practical use yes and it works and you're like yes. holy shit it works. you're like your skill level went up you know you yeah. got bonus okay you got bonus yeah. points <laughs> yeah, which is also to its detriment too, because when you're going to play airsoft here, it's one life game modes like 99% yeah. of the time. So you really get punished for making mistakes. So like, yes, you are learning, but it's very expensive to try again, right? So it's <laughs> like, so there are some fields where you have unlimited respawns, okay, and then you can go and you can practice all you want, but at gotcha. the same time, it doesn't. It's not quite the same, right? Because people play differently when they're yeah, you're more cavalier and. Yeah, mm-hmm. people are just running, going around everywhere. But when it's one right. life, it's just quiet. You can't hear yeah. anything. You're just like, <laughs> oh, my God, where are they hiding? I wish I had a UAV. <laughs> oh, no shit, right? Well, I was talking with uh, one of the guys yeah. I had on early, early on when I first started doing these podcasts. Yeah. Um, and I had – I don't know. I can't remember how I found his channel. But um, yeah. he has an Airsoft channel. 
It's called a uh, gunfather mill sim. Yep. He, uh, he does a lot of tactical training. And mm. so he's, a uh, in real life, he's a SWAT. He's on a SWAT team. He was a, he's a sniper, Wait uh, a officer, uh, gunfather. I think sim. I know this. Oh, I know this guy. You know, Rob? Yeah. He, yeah. 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 He was cool. Yeah, yeah I was cool watching shit, his stuff dude. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. He's got, Keep going. you know, and those are all, you know, real life. Yeah, he's uh, a law training, person, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the SWAT team and, uh, mm. you know, he's a SWAT officer. So he's been on the SWAT team for a long time and a mm. uh, sniper. And mm. um, so really cool to, to watch some of his videos yes. and uh, know that, like, this is legit. This is mm. what, you know, you really use in real life, you know, the best yes. way or whatever. He actually yeah. just came up with a sling. I bought a couple of his uh, new slings. They're fucking oh, yeah. awesome, dude. They're uh, bungee slings. Oh, okay. And um, man, they're so nice. They mm -hmm. uh, the fabric he uses for the uh, the strap, whatever you know, yeah, it doesn't exactly. cut into your neck. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's, so, it's they're really good. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. I remember that was the first uh, first person I talked to that had like uh, real world exp real world experience with tactics and i watched yep. his videos and i'm like we didn't see i when i was in the military it was before we started learning they didn't teach us uh, cqb nothing yeah it was mm -hmm. all out in the woods <clears throat> so yeah. when he's talking about i uh, when i had him on i said so i saw your videos on like you're clearing a room like cutting the pie or slicing the pie yeah, what, yeah. Do you, what do you call it you know i didn't know, yeah. I didn't know it, but, <laughs> wow. and yeah. he, he starts laughing he's like no it's this whatever but <laughs> yeah i didn't learn any of that shit mm. So when you when you uh, you start watching all these videos and uh, and learn all that and then took it to the field, you're like mm. hell yeah, now yeah, that's good, yeah, yeah. So like, also when I'm not on the field, so I'll play like Call of Duty or Rainbow Six, and it's just like I'll I just pretend I'm playing airsoft sometimes because the same principles apply, right? Like right. you're still at the pie corners, you still have to clear, you still have to have movement and communication, and a lot of a lot of the skills I unironically like I take from Call of Duty and yeah. I bring it to airsoft. So like nice. one of the main things I do is like I don't know like the new Modern Warfare twenty nine like Modern Warfare like twenty nineteen the animations are so good like they, they I don't know I think Lucas Botkin actually uh, did the modeling for it they didn't mocap him but they they use them as a reference for the reloads and everything for I literally sure. learned how to how to become more efficient with my weapon systems from watching the animations just copying what they do. So oh like, my God. it's really, I, I, I'm really good at like copying and like mimicking. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like I learned how to do like the tactical reload. All I did was just watch it. I just kept watching it over and I was like, oh, he puts it in his palm, does this, blah, blah, blah. And then it's cool because when they do slay the hand, they don't just speed up the animation. They actually do a speed reload. So instead of racking the slide, they'll just do the slide release with their thumb on a Glock. So I was like, oh, that's how they'd make it. That's how they do it faster. I was like, oh, okay. So I just copied it and it works. I was like, oh, it's actually real. So oh like you can God. actually figure out like, like how to do a retention reload by looking at the positioning. And you can kind of see how they grabbed it too. So if they're grabbing it like this, that means they grabbed it from the rig. If they yeah. grabbed it like this, they grabbed it from the belt. So it's like, oh, I can, you can kind of just imagine how they did it. And then yeah, I just practice that over and over and over and but then i was like to myself again i was like i'm never gonna reload because i have 90 rounds so what if i force <laughs> myself to <laughs> yeah well that's yeah. where that comes in yeah i could see that you're uh you're learning all this stuff you want to use the techniques you want to use it uh, and get better at it. yeah and so yeah, you're and then like, everyone who sees you do it they're like oh that was so cool i was like yeah that it is cool dude <laughs> it is so cool and you like i said you're you you can tell you practice you're very very proficient with it thank uh, you with the reload stuff yeah dude it looks awesome now what's a uh, what did you say um you just said it i can't remember what you said some kind of reload traction or what is it or a retention reload retention what is yeah, that yeah it's a tactical reload so oh. when uh so if I have my MP5, right? So if I if I have the time and I and I need to whatever reload, you'll just grab a magazine out of your pouch first, right? Okay. And then you'll grab the charging handle, put it down, and then you'll put it back in your chest or you put it in your dump. So you're retaining this magazine. Ah, uh, okay. So it's a tactical reload, so it means I'm doing it with intention rather than an emergency. Gotcha. If it was an emergency, just quick like. You know, you just kind of do it. You just drop it on the ground, whatever. I don't need it. Right. And you get, like I was saying before, you can tell if how they're grabbing it. So yeah. if I grabbed it like this, I, it's hard to grab like this, right? Uh -huh. But I can grab like this. So you can see that 
they grabbed it from the chest if they're inserting the mag because like of how they're holding it yeah yes right so there's a bunch of different like ways you need to know because if you need to grab from the rig for you know a tactical reload you can do that if you need to grab from the belt you know how to do that too yeah. so it's all about being versatile right because sometimes you can't grab from the belt like you're up against the wall or something or you had the time to re-index it and stuff like that so there's a lot mm. of stuff that i'll do and uh sometimes i screw up because you also have to be aware of you know your mag order and like are you, am i putting an empty mag into my <laughs> i think it's not call of duty right where like the bullets just magically fill up so there'll be times yeah. where i have and i used to do ammo counters there'd be times where i had 25 rounds in this magazine i was like all right i'm gonna get ready for this i'm gonna get ready for this fight so i'll reload and then I reload into a five round mag because it was the last <laughs> one. So I'm fine. I was like, oh my God, didn't I just do this? So there's a lot of moments like that too. So when you're under That's stress, funny. you kind of forget that like you do it. So now I'm changing to when I do the retention, I'll put in the dump pouch. And then when yeah. I have time, then I'll move these to the belt and I'll move everything back and forth like that. That way I always have a fresh mag no matter the situation. Right. Which is cool. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Now, have you tried the uh, any bull pups? Yes, right here. Oh shit! Okay, this is my only bullpup. Because those are oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, the P nineties. Those are uh, different to learn how to use or learn. Yeah, how to this one was bags. actually the most awkward to use because the way it you have to like hold mm -hmm. it. But once you get used to it, it's really, 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 really ergonomic. It's really you know closes up your body naturally, yeah. which is why I like right. the P ninety. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, and even if you have to switch hands, it's very easy. And because uh -huh. of that long barrel inside, I can like beam people from like 30 meters, no problem. Yeah. Which is nice. I have a Tavor on the way too. My friend's working on it. So like I had to learn that one too. But this one's, you know, it, you just got to learn it. But once you learn it, you learn it. And again, the reload, everyone doesn't like the reload. But I just, again, I just watched the animations. So a lot yep. of people will do is they'll go like this and then, you know, like an awkward. Right. You know, because that's what it looks in the video game, right? But like Modern Warfare, they do it properly. Like they, they, they know. What you actually mm. do, you can see, is that you hold that out in front, and then you just just give yourself a little bit, little, yeah, a little it's room just, there. It's, yeah, it's just yeah. natural, and it's like putting it in sideways instead, basically. Uh -huh. So it's just very easy. So nice. It just this is just one of those things you have to, you know, learn. But uh, bull pumps are really cool. I'm still kind of learning it. I had like an AUG a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, uh, and. It was all right. Like, it was kind of awkward because, like, the mag release was, like, here in that front in the of the back? mag. Yeah. So it's, like, right. really freaking weird. And then you had the charging handle, too. So like, I didn't like it because it was a Marui. So it was one of the old Marui. So it's, like, super creaky plastic. And I'm pretty rough, <laughs> I'm pretty rough with, my, I'm pretty rough with my, my stuff. So it's just, like, I don't want... Nah. <laughs> so I just returned <laughs> that to Amazon quick. And uh -huh. then I was going to... Then I ordered an RDB. The, um, the one by... Uh, what's that? Caltech. Oh, okay. the who makes the KSG that weird doof doof shotgun? I ordered that yeah. one, but then I didn't like how it looked. I was like, it looks weird. It looks like a tortoise shell. So a lot, of, <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the the guns that I choose have to be like iconic for me, for, especially for the channel these days. Like, I want to get guns that people recognize. So I don't want to oh, be like, okay. oh, check out my M4, check out my M4 with a hair trigger. Check out my <laughs> HPA M4. Check out my MP M4 with green. Uh, you know, and like the, every airsoft video I've ever uh, an, M, uh, an M4. It's yeah. always an M4. It's like, well, that's boring for me. Yeah. Like, I, I like to have variety. I like to use different, so, you know, having yeah, like every kind of different platform. Visual stimulation in the video instead of just, exactly. uh, oh, the internals are like this. Yeah, and like, bro, we can't see it. <laughs> yeah, especially in Japan, like, your internals don't really matter because everyone is capped at 0.98. And it, gotcha. Or 0.92, so like, it really doesn't matter what your internals right. are. Unless, so you, unless your gun is horrible. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's been a fun one. This is also a fun one too. Shotgun. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah so this is the breacher, and um, <laughs> I made a short on this. Like uh, everyone, whenever I was like looking at uh, airsoft shotgun video, like in America, they always have the M4 adapter and they always HPA tap it, and they treat it just like a rifle. I'm like, <laughs> why did you buy a shotgun? <laughs> right. <laughs> like. Oh my so, like, god. The whole point is like you you're interacting with the shells and you're shooting and yeah. you're learning that stuff and you just kind of like you know you kind of do your thing and you just kind of play around your shells. So like why? Well, I remember when I got my first shotgun, I made a huge mistake. So uh, you know in video games, sure you know like 
everyone's like, oh, you use a shotgun for CQB. Yeah, I like yeah. to keep this to close encounters. Okay. I'll get my shotgun. I don't think this is for close <laughs> encounters. This is like, <laughs> it's a meter. What the heck? So when I got it and I took it to CQB for the first time, I was like, I cannot use this thing. You just can't. And because it's the sport stock too, right? So you don't oh, have the shit. pistol grip to shoulder it over your shoulder. Oh, because, yeah. Because you're chicken winging if you do that like this because of the way it is. So yep. I could not use this thing at all. I was like, this is awful. <laughs> this is horrible. Um, and I remember I tried to sell this thing, but no one wanted to buy it. Because <laughs> like, okay, I get it. <laughs> I not buy this thing either. But um, oh God, I think it's... Funny. I think the only reason I kept it is like if someday I do like three gun or something like that, I'll have like oh, a shotgun okay. that I can use. But obviously yeah, yeah. this one is more made for the game, the MCS. For sure. Uh, M70. Well, so. dude, you're you're really good at uh, reloading that one too. Oh yeah, man. I took a lot. I remember. Oh yeah. So um, every time I buy a new airsoft, um, I spend about three or four hours just fidgeting with it and, and practicing different reloads and doing everything for like three four hours. Just passively, like I'll be playing or watching TV, and I'll just be like, just practicing mechanics, seeing what's working, right. blah, blah blah. And my fiance would be like, "You've been touching that thing since four o'clock. It's nine. I'm like, "Yeah, I gotta like, you know, <laughs> I gotta know." <laughs> so that's a lot of what I'm just doing. And um, then she's like, "All right, give me a back rub," and you're like, "Oh, my hands are worn out from yeah, you know, they're, they're doing like reloads." Grease. Yeah. <laughs> So then we also have our bolt action. So I don't like sniping, but they have like a Tokyo Maru made like a short version sniper. And I've always wanted to have a bolt action. Huh. Because of I've never uh, seen that. Enemy... this is the VSR one. So it is a VSR 10. So the one that oh, everybody shit. uses. Yeah, we've but had one. Actually... Yeah. But they cut it down a good amount and they've made right. the chassis like an M lock maple leaf one. And actually gotcha. the bolt is actually a lot lighter than the normal one. So you can actually wow. just really easily Okay. Yeah, so this one is really meant for CQB and also has a pistol grip, which is really nice. Yeah, that is. And nice. uh I've always wanted to just have one, just have a bolt action, because I want to have one of like every class, just like, you know, if you get bored, like ever get bored of like contests, like I have a different thing I can show people. Yeah, for sure. This one has a really cool reload, so it's like you have to like do that. Yeah. And and just going like that. And I'll run this at five rounds. So like oh, I'm doing a lot of reloading. I'm doing a lot of reloading <laughs> on the field and you get to like show it on the camera and just like Mm. I was like, yeah, that's sick. there's a lot of times. There's a there's a there's one time I remember I was playing this this private game, and then people were like watching on top, and then I ran across the field, and I was shooting at this dude all the way across the field, and I remember I had my MP5, and I was like, boom, and just threw the mag on the ground, got anyone, slapped it in, and it just like shot the other guy, killed the other guy, and everyone on top. Fucking sick, bro. That was fucking sick, bro. I was like, yeah, that's what we do. This that's how we do this. The really only the reason. Oh, that's <laughs> cool, cool, right? Man. Yeah, so that's why I don't like using gas guns as much now because they can't throw mags on the ground. Uh, yep. Yeah, so here's one that I got strictly for the fans. Oh, if you shit. you recognize this. You probably should if you were in uh, Okinawa. Yep. You're our uh, comrades, the GA Thai, the Japanese Self-Defense Force. Oh, okay. The Type 89, which is based off the yeah, AK-18. Yeah, Type 89. Yeah, yeah, and this is the paratrooper version. So it has the oh, foldable cool. stock and has the short mag. Yeah, so yeah. I got this one because uh, I was, I'm was i in Japan, and you can only really get this in Japan. They don't really have them over there in the States. Okay. If they do, it's like sold out right away. So I yeah. got this one, and the only reason I actually got this one is because it looks like an FNFNC. I was like, yeah, yeah I want this. <laughs> and it has the reciprocating charging hands, which is cool. So this is the gas one. Oh, shit. So yeah, so this one's really, really cool. It's a different system to learn. Has a really, really weird fire select, as you can see. It's like a, it's a whole like clock oh, dial. Wow. Yeah, so it's really Whoa. interesting. Yeah, so that when goes you're going all for, the way up there, yeah. And it's weird because when you go for this, this is full auto. So the first oh, instinct is to go full auto, yep. and then it's three round burst, and then it's semi. So when you're actually switching around, it's like, do, 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 <laughs> and then you shit. have to go. Yeah, so for this one. I don't even bother. I just keep it. I just keep it on safe or whatever. And it, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Nice. But it's long. It's 16 inches. So again, right. this, 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 you have your, you have your group of fun guns and you have your group of actual gameplay guns that you want to use. Yeah. Possibly the best gun I have. Little Scorpion Mod M. Oh, that's awesome. So this is actually made for the game. Like, you know, yeah. really tight spaces, really small. 
and it's really, really fast and responsive. And like, I don't even have to, you know, explain it any further. Like this will do obviously really well, but right. I've made it so that there's a reason to pick this over an MP7, for example, like okay. I said before. We have my MP7, right? So this MP7 is 40 round magazine, right? Has a slightly lower rate of fire than my Scorpion, actually, which is yeah. which is great for me. Slow rate of fire, it's around the same size, has a nice foregrip and stuff, but the Scorpion is faster. It is faster, but I have only 20 rounds uh, in here. 20 yeah. rounds and a, and a significantly slower reload. So I have to sacrifice high rate of fire and mobility for having a little bit slower reload and less ammo. So now that makes me decide, like, hmm, should I bring my seven round 1911 with this, or should I bring my <laughs> 22 round uh, Sig? So yeah. these kind of gameplay decisions really make the game interesting for me. So it's okay. like I don't need to get a new gun if I just use my guns differently. Right. And I remember asking um, Gunfather Milsim on his stream in December. I was like, "Yo, what do you think about real counts? A 30 round yeah. mag?" He's like, "Nope, I wouldn't do it. You need the you need the most firepower. You need. It's no point doing 30 rounds." I was like, "I." Oh, I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of all people you'd want to use dirty and stuff. Well, but he, plays, all the people... he plays outdoor. He yeah, does outdoor. like Milsims, you know. Yeah, outdoor, I do feel it. Right. So there'll be times where like I'm really out of ammo. I like, <laughs> or like we do respawn mode sometimes. So I'll be out of ammo by like the second round. Yeah. But at the same time, it makes you think, right? Like I can't be spamming. Uh -huh. So if I can't reach that person, that means I have to move. Yeah. That means I have to reposition or I have to think about my shots or I have to, you actually use my pistol, <laughs> right? So <laughs> it's even come to these times these days where like, hmm, maybe I do want to bring my four, five inch into CQB because then it forces you to use your pistol to go around tighter corners. Right. And I remember there's one time like I had, uh, what was that? This is my MP5. I was playing outdoor MP5 in this kind of city layout and I never used my pistol ever. Because the MP5 was short enough to get around everything. So I was right. like, why did I bring my pistol if uh -huh. I never have to use it, right? So then when I brought this into the field, the MP7, I purposely put a long-ass suppressor on it, which I never oh, liked before. I never yeah. liked it before. I was like, why would you do that? You're defeating the whole size of the whole point of having a right. small thing, right? But then it actually forced me to use my pistol sometimes. Because like, yeah. I can't get around this corner, so I'm going to use my pistol. So, you know, it gives you more variety and makes you... More rather than just being, I can just use this for everything. I have 150 rounds, or just spam, 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 right? And even in Japan, you can't even spam. There have, we have rules sometimes where you can only three tap. So it's like gotcha. one, two, three, stop. One, two, three, stop. And then some fields actually have BB limits, so you can only hold 100 or 300 on your for person. the whole round on your yeah. person. Okay. So like, if you run out of ammo, like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't do anything. So. Um, I really liked that from the beginning when I first started playing how I know how cringe that sounds, how tactical Japanese airsoft is compared to like American airsoft where it's more about just pew pew pew, spay around just rush yeah. around, get into a fight, blah 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 all that kind of stuff. And this is really <laughs> more about Japan and because the regulations and the rules are so limiting here, you can't indoors especially, like you can't run, you can't slide, you can't spam you have a certain amount of BBs, you have speed yeah. limits all that just brings it down to you, your skill, and um, your uh, awareness as well, right? Right. And being able to communicate with your team, whether it be verbally or non-verbally. So it's a really, really, really cutthroat. So it's like, it's really just get good. <laughs> so you can use any yeah, gun. You can no slap shit. with any gun. It's just all about you and how good you are. So you'll be facing people who are just like, if this is a corner, it's just like this. It's like super one, done, done. Very, yeah. very fast. Very, very quick. Like you're dead in an instant. <laughs> which is yeah like you'll go into a room you're dead like you're just, they'll just come out and you're dead and you're like holy shit i did not even see that Rainbow which Six, i don't know i don't want to i don't want to speak oh shit yeah i don't want to speak for anybody who's like you know law enforcement or anything has to do any like do any of that stuff in real life but i would imagine it's at least uh, close to that kind of experience except you never get to call your hit you're just dead so yeah. it's just like yeah terrorist hunt on realistic mode so, <laughs> um, yeah that's a good point though american uh yeah. you know this speed qb or the speed soft stuff in america is like uh super fast just spamming yeah. you know and they've got uh, a lot of these uh, like high kappas that are hpa tapped with yep you know m4 mag yep um you know unlimited ammo yeah uh, whatever you can carry on you whatever kind of thing and then yeah. it's just dot, 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 i mean just everywhere yeah and yeah. then just try again do it again do it again 
which kind of makes it pointless for me. The cool thing about the one life game mode is that there are it, like there are different phases of the game. So like at the beginning, it's like getting first blood and getting first picks. Then yeah. the mid, you know, have a clear mid phase in the game where like everyone's just camping and trying to gather intel, and be like, "Where is this guy? I don't know. I can't find him." And you're trying to get, <laughs> you're trying to get picks on people who are whatever, or you're trying to start to clear rooms and stuff like that. And then the third phase is when like maybe eighty percent of the players are gone, and now you're really rotating, and now you're really mm-hmm. moving, clearing with your team, and trying to get to the flag or trying to find the last person. And I like how that mode promotes that and promotes movement and promotes everybody just kind of moving in depending on the field there's some fields where like you just get stuck and you can't do anything but there's a lot of fields where you're able to actually rotate and flank around so that's fun it's a blessing and a curse like if you suck and you die right away then you know you get to sit in safety for like 20 (laughs) minutes so oh that's horrible right yeah nobody wants to sit on the bench nobody wants to sit on the bench it's expensive it's like 40 dollars to play right sometimes so yeah yeah. that's uh so yeah you were st- when you first turned around to get some of the guns behind you uh yeah. you know because in the camera view with your chair we can't yeah. we couldn't see that back there and i was like oh my god you got oh, a whole yeah. rack and and guitars yeah i got guitars uh, all kind of shit. yeah dude explain uh what's what's uh what's all back there now the thing hanging on the wall what do you got a shelf as well with uh some figures yeah. up there yeah, yeah, it's just like some Nintendo stuff when I was playing Zelda. It's all like Zelda stuff. Awesome. We got a pistol rack there, all my pistols. We got a uh, Springer USP Smith & Wesson. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't even use it. <laughs> I, I literally How only bought it. It was like $15 because my first handgun was a P9. And I was like, I want to get that. I want to get that Call of Duty gun. Yeah. And then, uh, so I just bought that to kind of test how it felt. And I was like, all right, I like it. I'll buy the, the gas bowl back. Then after that is my... Uh, we got what do we got this one glock 17 you know i nice. hated glocks when i first touched the glock i hated it really but then i felt the glock 17 and i liked it <laughs> i yeah. put a back strap on it. it's nice and i wanted to have that t- that cool tactical gun when i was getting really serious with like tactical training and i was watching all all of all of the gun tubers everyone had a glock I was yeah like, i'm gonna get a glock i'm gonna get a glock and it was cool so this was a this pistol is the gen 4 and I use this pistol like crazy. It is so beat up. It has had. It has seen so many rounds through it. Um, it is probably my most reliable pistol to this day, except when it's winter and it's not. Oh no, shit! And then I recently upgraded to the 19, and I didn't like the 19 when I first held it. Yeah. And then I held. And then I held it. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a back strap on this one, and uh, it's really nice. And the 17 mag, it actually extends. My my grip right. because I have big hands. So the reason I didn't like the 19 is because it's yep. it, I can barely fit my hand on it. But when yeah, I have it's... the 17 mag, it's fine, uh-huh. right? And it's a lot more compact. And it, I don't know what it was. It's like it's only like an inch shorter, yeah. but it feels completely different with a four three. Like I can yeah. really feel more compact with it, and I really really like how like four three pistol feel. So this one's also Gen four. And it has a uh, like a threaded barrel, but it's not actually threaded. It can't put a suppressor on it. And it has an right. inner barrel and a bucking. And uh, it's nice. It's very nice and compact. And uh, it can fit in like a chest rig if I ever need one. But I don't. I run them all in an omnivore. What else we got? Aha! Yeah. I feel like a kid in a toy box. I mean, I guess that's what this oh, is. Oh, dude. Right? Me too. I'm seeing all this stuff back here. I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> this is my most reliable pistol. I'm sure yeah. you know this one. This is the, the, Sig. the Sig M17. Not the P320 because it has the manual seat. Gotcha. So this is the actual... Uh, this one is actually one-to-one with the actual thing. So, oh, okay. It's the Japanese version, so it's actually a plastic slide. Because we have to have plastic slides. If you have metal slides, it's a no-go. Um, what now? Plastic, plastic slide with an aluminum frame inside. So oh. you can't have metal, you can't have full metal pistols in Japan because you know we can't have guns. Yeah. Um, but um, pistols are used for petty crime, right? So they want to avoid that as much as possible. But full metal guns yeah. for everything else, like no one's gonna be rocking up, or no one's gonna be rocking up with an M4 to like someone's house, right? In right. Japan. But if they are yeah. gonna roll up with something, pistols. it would be a pistol. Which is why we don't have Makarovs, because oh. a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, Yakuza Makarov. So you don't uh-huh. see a lot of Makarov replicas here. Uh, okay. or at least no Japan made Makarovs. Right, um, right. 
but this one I really like it a lot. It's my C- it's my first CO two pistol. Okay. Um, because we don't have green gas here. We have duster gas, which is worse uh-huh. than green gas. Um, is it? Yeah, it's weaker. Like it gets colder faster or something. When you're yeah, it gets using colder it. faster, less power. Mm. Um, so you can't run it in the winter. But CO two mm-hmm. you can run in the winter. Um, gotcha. Well, mind you, if you rapid fire, it's kind of fucked. It's still gonna freeze yeah, up, but no not as shit, much as duster. Dude. Right. Um, but this is great, very reliable, very quick changey on the on the CO two. You don't have to like take apart anything, and it has a hell of a kick and a nice clank to it, and yeah, it has a little do. custom trigger on it. So nice. I use this for a while, and I use it for winter. So this is going to be coming out again. Very accurate. It's a B machine, and I love it. Nice. Then we have my newest one, which is my Staccato. Four Ooh, that looks three. nice. It's yeah. very nice. I really love. Bought off my friend. Thanks, my. I love that very, grip. Very, very Gucci. It's the first time. And the thing is, you might notice, I don't have a high cap. No, I, I, I live haven't in seen Japan one yet. where they make uh, high kappas, and I don't I, have I'm, a high I kappa. was waiting. I was waiting. Hey, where's this, where's this high kappa? <laughs> I did have a high kappa. I had a, uh, I had a match. And um, I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't really like it. It felt really <sighs> like big and clunky. Yeah. And the recoil was just like lame. It was very uh, lame compared to like yeah. the Gen 4, like Glock. They had the new engine and everything, so it feels a lot better. So I don't know. For me, the high cap, but like I'm not really in the demo. Uh, you know, everyone have like the super decked out Minnesota Airsoft high cap. Was. I like to have my guns like looking grounded. Gotcha. Like there's a lot of law enforcement. Like this is just Cerakoted two tone. It looks like somebody would actually use this thing. Like I don't really like the gold on the gold match. Like it's really cheesy. <laughs> so then I was gonna buy I was gonna buy one. I was gonna buy a four three a uh, high cap up. I was at yeah. the store. I, like, I need to get a I need to get a twenty eleven. I gotta get it. Like, I, I. And then my friend's like, no, I'll sell you my staccato. It's CO two two and it's also a twenty eleven. I'm like, all right, cool. So then I waited and he sold it to me and I have no regrets. This thing is loud as fuck. Yeah, they are. It's really fucking loud, like and it has kick. And I like recoil, so this was perfect for me. So I've been testing this out lately. It's a B machine. It's also really good. And the only thing I wouldn't like about it is that the mags, I can't drop them on the ground because these little plastic things will crack. But my M17 right. mag, drop this on the ground all day, will not break. Mm-hmm. So I remember the last... first time we got a uh, Go I remember the first time we got a uh, CO2 gun, mm. you know, pistol, and I was like, uh, this thing was shooting hot as fuck out the box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause we, you know, we did, uh, unboxings and then we would review yep. the guns, yep. you know, after. So we got yep. the Krone over and everything and, uh, and I'm brand new. I don't know shit about airsoft. Yep. Di- yep. I didn't care about airsoft at all. So yep. I'm learning all this stuff. We pull out, you know, CO2. I'm like, Oh, okay. So we got the canisters, put them in, uh, start firing. It's like fucking 400 for a pistol. I'm like, what? Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. And <laughs> it comes down, you know, like 340, whatever. Yeah. After yeah. like the fourth or fifth shot, I'm like, yeah. what is going on? They're like, oh, it's CO2, you know, like we don't, yeah, in cool. fact, they were like, yeah, most fields don't let you bring the CO2 ones on, yeah. you know, most of them want the green gas or whatever, yep. you know, pistols. So mm. yeah, it was really interesting to find the uh, difference <laughs> with, <laughs> with that. Yeah, CO2, CO2 is definitely the way forward. And my last one is this guy, uh, Granddaddy's Ooh. 45 ACP. Um, and now I'll tell you why I didn't get the government. I did want the government. Yeah, I did want to get the government one, but for me, I run an omnivore. If you know what that is, it's like a no, I a, don't. A Blackhawk. Uh, yeah, explain that. This is omnivore. It's a holster. Ah, uh, okay. So, with this thing, and I recommend all your viewers uh, to consider getting this. So as long as you have a T three hundred, and they also make a TL one or the TR one, the other one, you can use any gun in here. So if I get my staccato and I put this on here. I can put it in the holster. Whoa, magazine came out. And it goes in. Wow. If I switch it to... Eh, if I switch it to my Glock, Glock, it will go right in. Like that. Oh, that's cool. So, the reason why I got the M45 instead of a 1911 is because it has a rail. Ah. <laughs> uh. It has a rail, and I can run it like that. Right. So I don't need to, you know, and every, I don't know, for me now, like, if I get a pistol without a light, it feels naked. It's I'm just sure. really weird to me. So. Yeah, once you're um, used to playing with it. Even if I, I don't even use my flashlight, to be honest. I oh, just, you don't? I barely use it. Because I'd rather oh, not okay. give away, I'd rather not give away my position. Right. So if I do use it, I will. But for me, it looks and literally for my holster. 
But yeah, well, a couple uh, of guys I talked with that do the uh, speed soft. Um, yep. This guy Cujo, he yep. uh, he's part of uh, Slaughter Gang mm-hmm. uh, team. Yep. So his videos, he does. He has a you know he presses the pressure switch on yep. the side of the light. So when yep. he peaks, mm. that's when he turns his light on and it blinds yep. somebody, and then he gets yep. them. It's like he's super. It he's really fast with it. Yeah. It's super go. I'm just bad at it. Like, <laughs> I know for me, it's enough for me to or, or something like that to get it. And now yeah. this thing gets stuck on here and it's on here forever. Oh, Which, Jesus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so another reason I wanted to get a 1911. But that grip looks awesome though. Yeah. It's actually really, a lot of people don't like it, but I actually oh, really? like it. Yeah. A lot of people don't it looks like cool. their grip. It's cool. Right. Um, I mean, it looks like a seventies pants. You know that grip. So, that grip looks yes. like a 1970s um, bell-bottom pants fabric. Oh, it does actually. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, so one of the reasons I wanted to get a 1911 because uh, you got to get one, but it's because it had sting- single stack. Right. So I wanted to learn the mechanics of how to read stack make, and um, you know how I learned that. Again, I just watched the Call of Duty animation, so it's just very easy like that and a lot of people say, oh, don't get single stack it's hard like, no it's not you just do it yeah. <laughs> right so i wanted to kind of learn how to learn that because you know i've been using double stacks the whole time right? yeah double stacks are beefy man yeah it's very easy compared to, to the double single stacks, yeah like for your attack reloads right so i wanted to like kind of learn the single the single stack too but then again i barely use this one and it's my own fault because i only run seven rounds oh uh, gotcha <laughs> because these magazines can't even handle that much gas uh-uh. to begin with uh-uh. they'll, they'll start farting at like one mag of like 21 <laughs> they'll start farting so there's no point so i was like ah, i just ran at seven blah, blah. that boomer energy so it's really cool it's really satisfying when you do get the kill with the seven yeah so, yeah that's my nice. pistol and then over there i got the urgi if you want to see that one yeah we want to see oh. all this yeah so this one is the uh it's my rec rifle. I don't even use oh, it for rec. Dude, that's nice. Yeah, fourteen point five, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm. I remember I didn't like fourteen point five. So my first gas pullback was the MWS, just the regular M four A one, the oh, carbine, yeah. and it was fourteen point five with the nine inch handguard, and then the fourteen, the rest of it just sticking out. And I didn't like yep. it, and then I sold it, and then I got this one instead <laughs> because it's Gucci and has a Geisley rail and uh, it's M long, <laughs> and it's good for my long ass arms. Yeah, and um, I actually don't even run uh, like LPVOs on this. I just run my EOTech, my holographic side on there, and uh, oh, okay. just use it for CTV. But uh, I recently got a LPVO for it, so I might no, what, just throw what it on What is that? There. The low power, low powered variable optic. It's hmm. like a sniper. It looks like a sniper scope, but you can adjust the. Uh, it's a variable zoom scope, basically. Yeah, and a lot of people use that for reconnaissance. I guess. Oh, uh, gotcha. This, this is like a, a reconnaissance rifle. Like you just kind of sit there and do kind of things with that. But I use this for CQB. Well, not yeah. really. I use it for outdoor. But I haven't used it in like a year, <laughs> so I think yeah. it might be time to use it again. So, yeah, for sure. This one is actually fully upgraded. It actually has like a full like barrel barrel inside is changed, bucking changed, has a Titan inside, super responsive, has recoil and everything. Yeah. Thirty round magazines, of course. And uh, yeah, this is probably my most reliable and fastest rifle I have. And it's really cool. And it's the new one from the new Call of Duty. Call oh, 2022. Shit. Yeah, this is the one that they use in the game. Damn. So I get to flex on the weebs with this one. In terms of content, <laughs> this is going to be... In terms of content, this will be really good. So, For sure. Uh, then we have... Ooh, this one is a fictional rifle. And you can tell me if it's actually viable. Which is okay. this guy here. It's the AK Storm. By Tokyo Marui, and it's a 762 oh, shit. AK 47, as you can see by the milled receiver here. Ah, and it's not stamped, it's milled. Well, obviously, it's stamped, okay. but it's a milled receiver <laughs> shooting <laughs> right. 762 with a nine inch barrel. So it makes no sense, it would never huh. work, it would blow this thing up probably, or it'd have insane recoil. But it's made for Japanese airsoft, which gotcha. means it's super short. I have it's really good for CQB and it's it has the recoil too. So when I shoot, it actually like reciprocates. Oh, yeah. And then when I when I have empty, when I actually go empty, you actually have to rack it uh, for it to actually shoot again. If you don't, oh, it shit. won't shoot. Yeah, nice. yeah, it won't shoot unless you tack reload. When you tack reload it, then it'll get shoot. But when you're empty, it will stop shooting. 
Gotcha. So you actually have to reload it and then rack the thing. Same with the other one. You actually have to hit the bolt catch when you run out of ammo. Yeah. Um, so that's why I like oh, that's it. Cool. It's, like a, it's a good in-between. Right. And then, this guy. I don't know why I have the LPVO on this thing. This guy. I'm sure we all know this guy. The good old Mark 18. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Daniel Defense Mark 18. And it actually has an, an actual licensed handguard on it by Daniel Defense. And oh, this, is LP, this is the LPV I was talking you about. Oh, it's okay. Just I've scope. never used one, yeah. Yeah, it's literally just the scope you can see. Right. You see? Yep. You can see it. Um, I only have it on here because I was making a video for it. But usually I just throw my EOTech there. And then I'll just throw it on here. And then that's kind of like my CQB rifle. But it's gas, so... Um, you can't, you can't drop the magazines, right? But it does have recoil and the whole bolt carrier system and everything. It's just like, Oh damn. Nice. Yeah, so this one is cool. And, uh, I don't really use it that much because it's winter now, but, um, this has seen a lot of shots too. This is a very, very reliable little weapon, 9.5 inches and yeah, probably my favorite, but I just can't use it in the winter. So. And if I wanted to uh, make an SBR, I could just t change the upper on my URG to like a Mark 18 upper, just gotcha. like a real gun. You can just change that out, and then I'll have an electric version of it. So this is just kind of my Gucci gun, I guess. Yeah, it looks And the awesome. last one. The last one. Yes. I see a second last one. I still have more. I have one more gun after this. And then this yeah. is the Scar H. Yeah, buddy. Now, why did I go for the H and not the L? Because it's a car, it's a fucking scar. <laughs> you gotta get the you gotta get the battle. Like I'm not, I know it's weird because like you have such a chunky, chunky gun, and yeah, then you're gonna is. you're gonna shoot you're gonna shoot five five six. Like what the heck? It doesn't make sense. Right. I want to get the I want to get the three oh eight. Right. So this gun is probably the worst gun I ever opened in my life. <laughs> really? It broke right out of the box. Oh shit! I'm, I'm very cursed. All my guns break out of the box. <laughs> um, but this broke out the box, um, so I had to get it repaired and fixed and everything. We got a we got a Titan in here, and that's it. We just got a Titan, and now this thing is great. It's amazing, but it is yeah. quite long. It's 13 inches. Um, it does come with a 16 inch. If you're crazy enough to use like the actual Scar L, like a Scar H, you put it on, and then you'd put the flash hider on. Oh God! I don't know why you'd want to do that in airsoft, but uh, yeah, so that's cool, and it's really nice. It has the UGG boot and everything, and it's actually yep. quite. Nice. And here's our magazines, which are all beat up, as you can see, because I throw them everywhere. And they actually only ha and they actually have a 20 round mag switch. So oh, just shit. like the real okay. 308, it's 20 rounds. So this right. makes me use this rifle sparingly. So it means it's gonna mm -hmm. be super accurate, super far, but only a 20 round. Gotcha. Which means I wouldn't I would not pair it with this. You'd probably want to pair it with, <laughs> you know, something like this or my uh -huh. sig with a 21, right? So gives it a nice roll, and of course it's iconic, right? Everybody it knows is. the scar. Everyone knows the scar, right? So for sure, not just well, another that stock M4. is uh, very distinct as well. Yeah. yeah, the UGG boot, right? The UGG boot. Uh huh. So it's really cool. Um, probably one of my favorites to use. I actually haven't used it that much yet. But uh, this one, more, two more, three more. This guy, you all know this guy, the four sixteen. Uh... Oh, okay, yeah, four sixteen. Gotcha. Classic four sixteen with the Geisley rail. So nice. a lot of people use the DevGrew one, the one that the Bravo Team 6 used to okay. get Bin Laden. Um, but I had that one. <laughs> but the quad rail on that was so chonky. Oh, I did not okay. like it. It was so heavy, so chonky. But this one is just like super thin profile, as you can see here. Very yeah, thin profile, very light, very Gucci. Don't even put anything on it because I know I'm just going to grip it like this or like this. Right. And uh, this one is, again, also – it's also recoil shock. So this one also has recoil. And also when you run out of ammo, you have to press the button. Oh to, shit! To operate, so nice. This is cool, and these are the same mags as the other one, which is cool. Then what else we got? Uh, I already showed you that one. Oh, here we go. That's why can't Ooh. go wrong. Oh shit! The vector, Chris vector, the vector can't go wrong. Yep. My iron sights aren't on here right now, but uh, yeah. So this is my newest one, or my second newest one, gotcha. and uh, I got it because. It's a goddamn vector. It's a, it's a vector, bro. Yes. This <laughs> gun is so ergonomically bad. So you actually have like a lot of um you actually have a lot of mods on it. So I got the grip on here. Because yep. if you hold it here, you'll hit the mag catch. Oh, um, shit. See if you try to C clap that. We also changed the trigger. 
We got an extension pad for the battery. Okay. And then on the side here, we have the uh, ambidextrous mag catch. So you could actually reload oh, it this way. Shit. So instead of pulling it like this. Right. And then going down and doing your thing, it's just one. Done. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So this makes it really viable. And actually, uh, not officially supported, but this, a lot of real steel guys will put this airsoft part on their actual vectors. Oh, that's awesome. At your own discretion. If it breaks, it's not on us. <laughs> kind of thing, right? So this one's cool. Um, I run this with 30 rounds again and has a higher, it doesn't really have a high rate of fire yet, but it does have a very unique reloading mechanic and very unique way to use it. So sure. That's why I got this thing. Now we is have that, one uh, more. Is that the oh, original ahead. stock on the back? This is the original stock. It's Gen oh, 2. It's wild. Oh, so it's, okay. actually good for air, it's actually good for airsoft. So, like, a lot of people have like face gear and shit. Uh -huh. So, you could actually put it right here. Like oh, this. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. There's no yeah. recall. There's no recall, right? So, you just go like, no. You can easily just get a, oh, get a sight cool. picture. Okay. Which is probably the most important skill for people to learn. It's like getting a sight picture. Right. And the last one I haven't revealed yet to the world. What? This guy right here. I'm actually going to reveal it probably next week. But this guy is the MPX. Nice. The, the MCX cousin. So I got this one uh, recently. And this is actually the second one I got today. I actually came back from the store today because the first one I got actually broke. Oh. <laughs> I'm cursed. I'm cursed. I was using it yesterday. I was using it yesterday. And then the piston stripped and it just stripped in the middle oh, of the game. Jesus. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I just bought it like three days ago. So I'm like, no. I have the receipts. <laughs> so I went back to the store today and they exchanged it for me. And this one's better. Nice. Um, but yeah, so this one is kind of the good old MP5. As you can yep. see, they are quite similar. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of learning this one. And um, yeah, yen's going up. So this one was actually cheap when I bought it. It's just, but uh, I think the next batch of them is going up by like $200. Because the yen Whoa. sucks. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to just buy this now then. Because I know I wanted to buy it. So, yeah, it's, it's a really, really tough time for air in Japan. Because uh, <sighs> that yen ain't looking nice. It's not fun. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so. And we have one more, which is Matavor. I have a 21. But my, oh, shit, friend's yeah. working, my friend's working on that one right now. So I don't have it. But, yeah, now I have all my guns all over the place. I think that's <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, but Jeez. it's for the, you know, you, you did a dude. That's fun. That's what we want to see, man. All of that stuff. That's so crazy. You have so many. Like, uh, when we first started, like, the way you're sitting, you can't see really anything. We can see the pistols there. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then yeah. you start. It's like one of those uh, scenes in a movie where, um, you know, like, they're pulling the guns out, like, forever, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't know they have. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. And the thing is, they all have either a very unique personality about them, or they're unique, right? They're not all just reskins of right. the same thing, which is important for me and the channel and whatever. More for me, right, though. dude? Oh like no, it's cool things. as hell. Yeah, and you're very, proficient with all of them. Jesus, bro. That's, yeah, it's, it's like you just practice, right? I mean, good. there's still some I have, like, you know, once you master the gun or the mechanics of the gun, the rest is just the game, right? Yeah. So, like, learning how to work with your team and stuff which i still have to work on like i'm still a, i'm still a straight ass pussy when i'm like going into like row or sue when you're talking to he takes point all the time i'm like he's like all right made it you're gonna take point I'm like hell no <laughs> in my life bro you go do that you have balls i'll follow up and get the frags so that's kind of like my role on the team like i just clean up and i just kind of pick up where they left off because i've, I've been so conditioned since the beginning of me playing airsoft to just play my life and yeah. survive and survive and try not to die. So <laughs> that's kind of just been my whole mantra. So hell yeah. Yeah. You got some that's good me. shit, man. That's awesome. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, dude. My credit card company loves me. I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's yeah. all investments, right? Like I do it for, I'm trying to do it for some sort of side living at least. So sure. At least it's not all going to the, money pit of nothing so right yeah. well that's most people i talk with they're uh you know that's once they get an airsoft man they're and and a lot of them don't have you know bigger youtube channels if they if they even have one yeah and they just get well especially mill simmers uh yeah. the guys that do mill sims hmm. they've got to you know not only get the the decent guns that shoot hmm. farther 
uh, mm-hmm. because they're outside, you know, shooting long range. Um, yep. They've got to get all the gear that they've never had. So yes. helmets, chest yeah. rigs or plate carriers or uh, every, you know, all the uniform stuff. <clears throat> we went yep. to this uh, mill sim over the weekend. Yep. And uh, the trailer there that was selling uh, all some, a bunch of gear and stuff that they're always there. They had a uh, special limited or I guess hard to find or rare uh, cami pants. So they had all yep. these uh, pants you know, with different camos. <laughs> 350 bucks for a pair of pants. Jesus Christ. I was like, bro, no. No. Uh-uh. They were, <laughs> I don't care how rare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 don't even, I don't even own a single thread of camo. I just wear black. <laughs> And I wear clothes. I just wear a t-shirt or I wear jeans or flannel. Like, yeah. 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 I think for me too, is like, I mean, it's not really my place to say or anything, but like for me, I don't know. I, I, I don't play airsoft to imitate military right. and like pretend I'm a soldier. Like a lot of yeah. people think I do for me. It's just call of duty in real life. Like, yeah, I just, it's just a real life video game for me. Right. And I want to get better at the video game. And it just so happens that, you know, real techniques help you get there so yeah. for me like for me to impersonate an army like a military person it kind of feels like i don't know for me it's kind of cringe just like i don't yeah you know, <laughs> i didn't do anything to like do anything i'm not even close to whatever so yeah. i'd rather just be like an operator who can just have every who could just happen to handle every weapon and i'm just some guy you could be anybody could be me right so yeah that's practice. how i kind of do it yeah but now like Stu and dan my teammates like BDU and everything. I was like, I don't know, buy it. It's expensive too. <laughs> it's very I'm expensive. Paying, I'm not paying 200 bucks for pants, bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys have um, outdoor like mill sims over there in Japan? Uh, like really. um, three day mill sims? Okay. No, we have uh, one in the entire year, and it's a 24 hour game. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's not even it's not even like a mill sim thing at all. It's just 24 hour game. Yeah. I think they have like different phases. Like they'll have a night vision mode at that point, and they have like a part of the game where you like get to camp and stuff. But it's nothing like Milsim West or nothing like BB Wars or whatever, like how the states does it or even Europe. It's just yeah. a game. Um, yeah. Most of our games are just team deathmatch, basically arena style. You know, you're not really doing anything like objectively you're just trying to not to die um with the exception of one field called um tokyo sabage paradise and that's like a role-playing kind of field so they have like situations things and happening so like they'll deploy you from a truck and you got to go like throw smoke grenades and then you'll, you'll roll out of the truck and you got to fight or they'll have one where you have to escort a cameraman who's trying to like do a news story on like i guess oh shit Oh, the terrorism and you know what's yeah. happening right now. So he's reporting on it. And the thing is, the guy will like try and go off on his go off on his own and like try and go film shit. And, like you gotta like you gotta like stay with us, man. <laughs> you gotta, like you gotta, you gotta chill, bro. Right? Oh so, like, shit! Just, yeah, they have like that kind of stuff. They also have one like prisoner rescue. So you'll find the first one gets to the prisoner, and then you gotta put a bag over his head, and then you gotta like bring him to a car and try and extract him and stuff. And I oh, think shit. that field also does kill streaks. Yeah. So like you can if you get to a part of the map. Uh, you can get a kill streak radio, and then you can call the staff basically, and it's like E3, which is your grid, and then they'll make an announcement saying, "Ah, everyone in E3 dead," and they'll play like oh. music of like the air str- of like planes coming over, and it's like, "Yeah, oh, you're shit!" Dead. <laughs> you call the kill streak <laughs> on you, it's like, "Ah, oh, shit!" So that's the only field I think that does it. The rest of it yeah. is just you know, capture the flag, team deathmatch. But gotcha. again, it's it's one life game mode, so it's intense enough. So like, uh-huh. you got you got to really play your life. And it was really right. cool when everyone was here. Like Airsoftology was here, even Matt from Evic was here. Everybody was here, and we're all playing together. And then like they're yeah. just thing that like you can't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the game we did play at the Crytek event, we played like a forty minute unlimited life re- unlimited game mode, and then oh, okay. it was still fun like stacking up with them. And I was like, all right, guys, let's let's play a private game. Right after this. So then, like, he had 50 minutes on the field. I set up the rules. Like, all right, guys, it's going to be capture the flag, get one respawn. Because they didn't want them to sit out, right? It's like, okay, get oh, one okay. respawn. Yeah. And they really liked it. They really liked it because, like, gotcha. it's completely different. It's just uh-huh. about, like, being strategic and tactical. And that yeah. was coming from dudes who were, like, 
real steel guys. Some of them yeah. were like real steel industry guys. Like, oh, um, you know, I feel humbled that you're actually able to enjoy it. <laughs> so, hey, I hope That's everyone cool. can experience. I hope everyone can experience Japanese airsoft that one. Because, yeah, or dude, at least even at your local fields, go play a private game with your friends and say like, try some one life game modes. You'll see how one different life. people play. Right. You'll see, how they'll play. You'll see how they'll play differently. Very different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it does change it, you know, big time. Yeah. Well, just like in the video games where you have, um, what was the game mode where uh, you Search couldn't... and Destroy? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like Search and Destroy, mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. So. And then the ones, Jesus. you know, the ones that have like a, a total, uh, like you'll have two team respawns. Yes, like a wave respawn. So, or like you'll have... Uh, oh, two, like, oh, like uh, two lives. You'll have hmm. two lives, but hmm. for your whole team. Oh, so, yeah. Shared life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you get down, you know, if you get killed, uh, now it's down to one. And then somebody else. you're wasting everyone else's Or if life. you did it. Yeah, you're wasting yeah. everybody else's. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It really yeah, does change cool. how you play. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you were at the much. event. Uh, I saw a bunch of pictures and videos and yep. stuff. You were at the event yep. with uh, RGK, with... Um, U.S. Airsoft. No, no cat. Uh, oh Airsoft. shit! Yeah, no, no cat was, she there. was there. Yeah, she was there. She's so good, dude. She. Is I asked so her to be on the uh, podcast like mm. six months ago. Uh, um, so we've been trying to, you know, if, she wanted to. We were just trying to figure out a time, mm. and with the time difference with uh, New mm. Zealand, it was yeah. uh, it was difficult to do. So yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, she was there. She's really good. She, like her, the first time her ever playing at the field. And I was like following behind her. I'm gonna upload it whenever I get it done. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just following her. Her movement is just so confident. Like she's just like this. She's so quiet. You can't even hear her footsteps at all. Really? And then there was one time I was in CQB and I was fighting RGK. And then uh, he was at the end of CQB and I ran into him. Like oh shit, I go around to try and flank through CQB and I'm clearing all these. And I all I have my pelters on and I can hear footsteps and everything. Just, I'm trying to walk heel to toe so I don't make that much noise. I'm just going through it and I hear like nothing. And then there's like a little nook in the ground. It's like, uh, it's like in the wall. There's a hole in the wall at like foot level. And all of a sudden, she, Notocat jumps out and she goes boom and shoots you right in the arm. I was like, bro, <laughs> we're on the same team. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. so she killed me. But she's so quiet and she's so good and she's so confident. So I was really, really impressed. Yeah. It was really great. Now explain uh, mm. this giant freaking gold gun that was at this event. <laughs> what in the hell? I saw. Gun? Bro. Like, yo, I don't know. There was memes. Oh. There was memes. The Japanese like their long man crazy shit. So I think it was just an inside joke. They just wanted to do it. But I think Lilacs actually sells that. Not in gold. Like for April Fool's Day, they make these stupid long handguards they have a stupid long cry attack hand they have a stupid long mcx hand and they have a stupid long desert eagle one and it's like <laughs> three meters long oh and it, it, they, you can buy it you can buy it it's like 400 dollars or something like oh, that yeah, yeah you can buy it for straight memes and people i, I think i've seen at the field like what the fuck but it's funny <laughs> it's just for the memes right no one's actually gonna buy it but like you know i think that one was actually worth like Quite a bit of money though. It, it was actually gold. It was actually gold plated or gold gold sprayed or gold flaked. Holy so shit! It was like eight thousand like dollars. Yeah, it was like an eight thousand dollars. Oh my 000. god! Yeah, so you're literally holding like eight thousand dollars worth on there. So you have to like Jeez. really be careful. <laughs> They're like, please yeah. don't scratch it. It's eight thousand dollars. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Yeah, I saw the uh, picture. Well, the first one I saw was uh, U.S. Airsoft. Um, yes. What's his name? I think Matt Scott. Scott. Or Scott. Yeah, he's ho yeah. he's holding it. And he's like, I mean, yeah, this like thing this. is, you know, yeah. oh my god, it's so big, yeah. It's super long. It's cool. It's yeah. funny though. The memes, they love the memes. <laughs> basically, Japan. So, what was Again, this big like, event yeah. that uh, they came over there for? Was this? It was, it's the Crytac owners event. So, like, Crytac is rather new in Japan, but like people who uh, like Crytac really like Crytac there. So, right. Lilacs runs this event where they, every year they do this Crytac owners event. So, everyone who has a Crytac gets to come and see all the cool new Crytac products and Crytac goods and vendors come out and do this whole thing. It's a big PR event, basically. Sure. And they run that every year. And there's like prizes and shit and competitions and that. And they have international guests because Lilacs is, you know, like the international liaison for Japanese parts to 
rest of the world, basically, right? Gotcha. So, uh, yeah. So that's why they were invited and came over. I'm domestic, so, you know, they just invited me too. I was like, all right, cool. You know, I talked to some of the guys there already. So, like, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get you up for KOM as well or Crytek Owners meeting. I was like, all right, bet. So then nice. that was cool. So I was only with them for like three days. The rest of them were, went back to Osaka on the west side of the country to film at the office at Lilacs. And you'll see their videos on YouTube now. We did, did a bunch yeah. of cool stuff, which is really cool. I wish I could have gone, but I have work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear you, man. Yeah, man. Dude, very, very cool. Thank yeah, you. all your guns. and how, I mean, you got you haven't been playing Airsoft that long. And no. uh and you, yeah, you're killing it, man. Killing it. Your YouTube channel, all your shorts. Uh, you. It's, yeah, you're doing a great job. I, I love it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. We're and so then you got a shit ton of guitars here. back there, too. Oh, yeah, man. You still play? Uh, Not really these days, to be honest. Like, most of my time is just spending on Airsoft, so haven't been really. But a couple years ago, yeah, I was, like, writing records and making songs and doing all kinds of things. I do like the whole thing. Like I do the drums and the bass and vocals, all that. I make like songs, like full up productions and stuff. What? I still do. I still do that for my clients. I'll, they'll send me tracks and them and make them radio ready. But these days I haven't really been writing music or anything. I usually only write music when I'm super depressed. So I guess that's uh. a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you see that I'm writing, I'm popping out a whole, place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit yeah, yeah. but i haven't hey, really touched man. i got my base over there recently yeah. hit it with the magazine so now i'm sad oh uh, but it's okay i only use that for recording it's nothing really special gotcha show you my other gun look at that that's not a gun this is my uh my only gibson guitar i own oh shit it's my gibson les paul jr and uh what i really i really like green day Green yep. Day is like my favorite band of all time. So like I wanted to get the Billy Joe esque uh Les Paul Jr. I love those P nineties. Not the P ninety gun, the P ninety pickup. <laughs> really nice single <laughs> coil. And I yeah. love how I love how they have a really nice wood chocolate smell to them, the Gibson because of the rosewood. It's so really? really nice. Yeah. And uh this actually is like this anniversary version, twenty fifteen. So it has like what? electric tuners and shit. Oh and shit. And everybody everybody hated it. Everybody hated it when this came out. They're like, I don't want electric tuners. So you can actually. And, it, and it'll tune itself. So you can see. So you oh, can it's see. turning. Holy yeah, shit. It, it tunes itself. So that way. So it makes it really, really good for recording. So when I'm doing yeah. like multiple takes, you just tune the shit up and it'll go. And then there you go. Unfortunately, so, we can't hear it through the mic. I know. The, I know. Uh, you probably, you probably yeah, can't. But I can but, see uh, it. I can see it moving. Yeah, it's, it's tuning. It's tuning. Oh, that's cool there. as hell. Yeah. So this is what I use for recording. So what? Um, people didn't like it because it's uh, kind of like cheating? Sacrilege to Gibson. Yes. I can see. <laughs> now, where did you find that? That one? That guitar? Yeah. I bought that uh -huh. in Canada and I brought it over. Okay. This one is actually a Made in Japan exclusive guitar. You mm. can't buy it in the States. Okay. The uh, Fender Mustang. Ooh, and uh, this guitar is only in Japan, and it's actually meant for kids, like us, like students. So it's actually, if you can see the scale, it's actually a lot smaller than the Gibson. So the the fretboard is smaller. Everything is closer together. It's actually meant for children, not children, but people who are just beginning to learn guitar. Yeah. And uh, you can see it's a Fender, and it's a Fender made in Japan. What? So those are very expensive in. America, if you wanted to buy, because there's Fender Mexico, and then there's Fender American, and then there's Fender Japan. So this one I got right away because I've always wanted to have a nice uh, single coil pickup, and you can actually manipulate the pickups in different spots to get a lot of different tones. And uh, I kind of use this for like a little bit of the cleaner stuff, a little bit of singer songwriter kind of stuff. If you want to do yeah. some cool John Mayer or whatever, um, yeah, I use this one. And then oh, my, cool. I use my other P90 pickup for. A little bit janglier tones, and then I have like a just a cheap Gibson Les Paul replica, I guess, which first has humbuckers, which I use for like thick tone. And uh, yeah, then I have an acoustic guitar, and that one's also a who is that? Oh, that's an Epiphone, so that's also like Gibson. So 
yeah, I don't know how much if I know how much your free viewers know about guitars, but yeah. yeah. Oh, That's I'm sure. Me. Well, there's a handful of them that I've talked with that are uh, big into music. So yeah, you know, yeah, making yeah. music and yep. Yeah. So. I uh, yeah, I dude, those are those are cool. So you've been playing. Um, how did you get into music and playing all that stuff? Like at a young age or? Yeah, I was 13. Okay. When I first started, I think. Yeah, 13. It's Guitar Hero. Nice. <laughs> Remember the game Guitar Hero? Like of course. Guitar Hero 2. Like, I was super into Guitar Hero 2. I was like, I want to learn how to play guitar. <laughs> and I got it. And then my, my sister had an acoustic, so I told her playing. Remember, I was learning how to play Guns N' Roses on acoustic. Oh, yeah. Like, super yes. difficult. And then I got an electric for Christmas back home in my Epiphone. And then I was learning Sweet Child of Mine and Welcome to the Jungle and all that kind of <laughs> shit. And I was learning all that. And then I discovered Green Day, and it's so much easier. It's like, all right, I'll just play Green Day songs. So <laughs> I just played Green Day for like years and years, and I still do to this day. Um, oh, that's awesome. And then recently I've been playing a little bit of Blink, Blink-182 here and there. Yep. But uh, I also had a singer-songwriter phase, so I was playing a lot of like, well, you know, I can't even attempt to play John Mayer. He's just way too good. Um, hmm. But just like more singer-songwriter kind of stuff, G chords and open chords and stuff like that. So Yeah. That was kind of my thing. I uh, also learned to play drums when I was in high school. No, after high school. Yeah, because uh, every guitarist got to got to jump on the drum on the drummer's drum kit during band practice and piss them off. <laughs> and then uh, basically, I learned how to play drums by uh, watching music videos, and I just like pretended to do it. And then I got a little like Yamaha drum kit thing, and I learned from there. And then I bought a oh, drum shit. kit yeah. from there. So it was all muscle memory. So I was just kind of learning that way. And then bass, you automatically learn if you learn guitar. So I was like, I already learned bass. Yeah. And then vocals, you know, I just sing whatever, just good enough. It's not amazing or anything. Um, but yeah. And then the only one that I can't play, which I wish I could, would be a uh, piano. Piano would have been really useful, but I just yeah. cannot. I cannot for the life of me play piano. <laughs> just too hard. I can't. I can't. I can't separate the hands. It's just. It's too hard. I'd rather just oh, that's weird that you're <laughs> able to do the drums. Yeah, but not yeah because, uh, because that's no, I, I can never use no, the drums. There's no accuracy involved in like remembering notes, right? Yeah, You're just sure. like hitting shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like there, right? So, but yeah, my my wife's uh, my fiance says the same. I can play piano, but I can't even play. I, there's no way I can play. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I get it. I know, I understand. It took me a while. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a lot of practice of listening to songs and pretending to play. So, yeah, no shit, right? Yeah, that was basically it. Stop. Now, have you heard room. of a um, like? you know some of the really really good guitarists um there's a couple of bands that i think they're fairly new i just heard about them from talking yeah. with a, a guy last uh, a couple weeks ago mm. uh polyphia and um oh god i can't remember the other one anyway dude they are uh really 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 good with um their bass and their guitars mm. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah, so like one of them, in fact, one of the bands did um, the. Uh, they had Steve Vai do a oh, wow. part in their in their song, mm -hmm. and you know that was a big guitarist when I was growing up. You know, a teenager, yep. or whatever. Steve Vai was, uh, yep. you know, real big. So for guitarists, mm -hmm. Eddie Van Halen, of course, yep. Steve Vai, yeah, you know, a handful of them for sure. Yep. Ah, good times. Yeah, days. dude. Now awesome, music man. these days is just electronic and whatever. Dude, the melodies, the melodies are uninspired. It'd be okay if the melodies were inspired. A lot of them are just boring and just meant for dance. Which you know you can't really rack on it that much. I mean, at the end of the day, music is music, and you know people will like what they like. But you sure. know what I like about Japan is that they still like have rock band. They still have very, very you know when they when they go to band practice here, bro. Like, well, usually, uh, you know, back in the West, when we just go to band practice, you kind of just remember the song in your head, and then everyone just kind of jams together. Yeah. I remember one time I was looking through the studio, because, like, you go to studios to practice, you can see through the door. And then all of there's, like, five musicians. There's a guy on guitar, another guy on guitar, a guy on vocal, a guy on bass, and a person on drums. And all of them, including the drummer, sheet music. They're playing. They're playing fucking you know rock music, but they're all yeah. reading. Sheet, they're all reading sheet music like this. What? It's super super tight, super clean. But they're all like, I was like, yo, sheet music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're not so riffing. like, 
Yeah, like they're 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 doing their thing, and it's all technical, yeah. but it's all everyone's on sheet. Even right. the drummer's on sheet, watching those X's and O's. He's he's on it. I'm like, they taking it serious out here. I mean, over us, it's just like right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go G E G E F. Is it? I bet. And then that's it. That's all you do, right? <laughs> like, that's how we do it. So it's very uh-huh. interesting. So I appreciate that the music industry here is very acoustic. Even the newest yeah. songs are still acoustic. Yeah, I like that too. I I I can't really get get around uh, the electronic, where mm. where you're not really there. There's something about I think there's something special about uh, rock bands. Yeah, because you know the music they make because you've got four or five people. Yep. That play something different. You know, a different yep. instrument. They yep. have to work together to mm. make this thing. You know. Uh, sound good or whatever yes and uh yes. they all have to be very good at their at, at their instrument yep. um on the fly and then there's some bands where a couple you know they have backup singers like yep. some of the you know the rest of the band will sing well as well yeah and uh and not only are they doing all that but they're putting on a show where they're dancing around yeah and running and sliding or hmm. you know you remember acdc angus yep. young used to do that little yep. kick kick walk yeah, the across kick the thing, stage the kick walk thing. Yep. <laughs> i yeah. mean shit like that i appreciate that way more than uh you know the uh, because of, i think because of the how much work goes into all these guys Craft, coming together to do it. that yeah, yeah. like yeah, I, I can appreciate the electric music like mm-hmm. crafting it and the sound design around it like right. i can't like there's actually a lot like coming from someone who does mixing engineering too it's just like there's a lot of layering and a lot of things that goes into that like it's yeah. not just i'm gonna turn on this synth there's a lot of things underneath that like if you were to take it away you would notice it but when it's there you don't it's like that kind of right. shit it's just like i can't there's a lot going on and like i appreciate but when it's like live it's just like they're just playing the track they play the track and that's it it's like okay well what else what else is there right <laughs> i guess yeah. you can like do this but it's just like for me yeah. electric shows apparently my friends are telling me like it's just it's, it's just it's, lights and the hype i'm like okay yeah and then i saw green day live and it was amazing <laughs> like oh, you can sing it they bring people on stage i remember when foo fighters um there's a phase where dave grew leg so then he had to use this game of thrones kind of chair just oh, full of guitars shit. and he was yeah. rocking out he had his leg on a in a cast is like sitting on his throne and he was still putting on a great show yeah and you know it was just it's really good i just love i, know, I love music festivals like like i kind of i don't know yeah, that's cool, man. But yeah, yeah the first yeah. concert I ever went to was uh, U2. Oh, so okay. U2 was in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And yeah. um, we went, I was 17, mm-hmm. and we went uh, with, you know, high school friends of mine. And yeah. we're in the back of this giant van. Minivans yeah. weren't even out yet. Yeah. It was just a regular box van or whatever. And uh, yeah. we're all smoking weed and drinking yep. in the back. Yep. On the way to the concert, <laughs> and yep. uh, we get there, and this was the first concert that uh, Bono did after he broke his arm. So there was a uh, he he was known back in the eighties for climbing mm. on the scaffolding around the stage mm. Mm. while he's singing. Uh, mm. I don't know, it was just his thing, I guess, mm. and uh, it was great for the show. But mm. his arm was in a cast. Uh, during that concert, and he still climbed up on the shit. Still did it? <laughs> it was, yeah, 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 it was awesome, dude. That's legendary. I'm telling you, bro, it was cool. But that was my first concert, and uh, halfway through the concert, or maybe three quarters of the way through the concert, like me and two other buddies, we all had to run out and puke everywhere because you know we mixed too yeah. much weed and alcohol. Yeah, uh-huh. and, uh, <laughs> turned green. But um, yeah, and then I've seen. Uh, uh, Metallica. I saw Metallica That's when good. I was in the military in uh, San Diego. Nice. Uh, they were with, uh, um, God Almighty, who is it? Uh, whoever sings uh, Cherry Pie. She's my Cherry Pie. Oh Warrant. shit. Warrant. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Warrant. So Warrant opened up with them, and uh, yeah, that was good. And then recently, my wife and I have been going to uh, heavy metal concerts. Nice. So I've always been, you know kind of heavier music pantera um mm. you know shit like that and um mm. so recently we went to uh einstein kills uh black veil brides 
Mm-hmm. And I can't remember the other one. Oh, Motionless and White. Okay. So they were, it was like a Trinity of Terror kind of thing. Okay. So it was like coming up to October or whatever. Yep. So uh, went to see that. But anyway, yeah. We're, uh, I, dude, I still love concerts, man. They're, they're yeah. such a fun thing to get around. You know, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, the airsoft thing, you know, you, when you go, um, you know, it's the people that make the difference, man. You, yep. you know, everyone's there at the concert. They love these bands. They love this music. Yep. They're excited about being there. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's cool. Yes. Airsoft. <laughs> 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 exactly right <laughs> it really is it really is yeah yeah well listen man i appreciate uh appreciate you being on here i'm glad we got to set up a time for and, having me and do this yeah for yeah. sure dude tell awesome. everybody where they can find you uh you can find me at uh maydaysan.airsoft on instagram or maydaysan airsoft on youtube those are my two main channels and if you write maydaysan without the airsoft you'll find my other japanese channel where it's like i make jokes about japan and stuff and coffee nice. so after all there up. yeah yeah so i'm sure uh e-rock will uh put it in the description <laughs> down below or whatever you find find it where you might read this so i hope to uh see you there yeah yeah man thank you so much it was great meeting you it was great meeting you buddy all right brother let's take good. care okay all right <laughs>